Alright, short turn around here at Narrabeen, the Sydney Academy of Sports and Recreation here in New South Wales. Kenny Andres back with my third co-commentator, my color commentator, my sports analyst for this afternoon and welcoming him into the booth for the very first time, a famous name around Gridiron Australia, particularly Gridiron New South Wales, is Coach Wolf, a.k.a. Coach Milos Vassell. Welcome to the booth, mate. Thank you very much, Kenny. Uh, great pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, like we just mentioned, I hope to be your John Mad uh, my John Madden to your Pat Summerall and have oh, some fun today. Absolute dream. Are you going to try and get you a, a drawing marker? That's <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> where's my telestrator? Where is it? Yeah, all right. Western so, Australia have won the toss the and elected to receive. Shake hands, guys. Have a good game. Interesting. Queensland seems to be the only team that wants to defer, and just to recap you from last game, the uh, Victorian Eagles, they defeated the All-Stars by a good question, actually. It was 34 points to 14, I believe, the final score was. So, yeah, a strong showing by the Eagles. Impressive stuff from the All-Stars towards the uh, second and third quarter. Eventually, the Eagles, once they, especially in the second half, when they switched back to Sotteropolis there, found the uh, winning punch. I was on the sideline for the All-Stars, uh, just uh, hanging out, helping with the chains, and the team spirit there was wonderful. It really was great to see the young kids getting behind every single play, not getting down on the score or anything else. It was really was cool to see. His results day two, 49 points to nil for uh, South Australia and Queensland. We'll get a <laughs> confirmation on the Victorian uh, and All-Stars game. We uh, can confirm Victoria did win by at least two touchdowns. And then, of course, right now you're witnessing WA taking on the New South Wales Wolverines. Both these teams suffered the taste of defeat on day one. WA Raiders on the uh, the end of Queensland and uh, New South Wales losing 14-10 to Victoria. Did you have a chance to watch both of those games? Mate? Yes, I did. And two different types of losses as well, where uh, the young, very young WA team uh, uh, were, were expected to get, have a tough showing against the, the favoured Queensland team where the New South Wales team went down to it uh, in a game that they probably felt that they should have won so it'll be interesting to see how they come back from the two different types of losses uh, the team spirit uh, has to get picked up again and get and ready to fire for this game interesting to see how the, the coaches will uh, react to what happened in the last game to see if there's any adjustments made for this game well, well I'm having to tell you what the New South Wales camp you would not be able to tell they suffered a loss on day one they came in with a boombox blaring, mm. a bit of country roads. A yeah, country road. Uh, uh, my old coach in the States used to say, there's nothing brings, brings the team together like uh, uh, singing together. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so if you fan. can sing together, if you can really belt out a song together, you can uh, play together. Well, speaking about belting, that kick is belted all the way to the Australia, Western Australian goal line. Now not returning is Alex Endel. If you saw the interview there, there kick returner running back and just overall offensive dynamo has injured his hamstring and will not be returning for the rest of the tournament and instead returning is Zane Grigorovic now was supposed to just be a defensive back this tournament without a uh, with losing one runner back he's going to be taking some reps on the offensive side of the ball now well, it'll be interesting to see how they fill that uh, great loss of uh, of Alex Hendel not not being there what do they do now what do they do now I've seen a lot of people tuning in, a lot of New South Wales fans. Here you go Western Australia with their first carry. Playing Inside some. zone, strong running. Exactly right. Working to their strengths. Now, interesting to see starting quarterback, Char is that? I thought for a second it might be Charlie Reed, or have they got? No, it is. Returning to the starting role is number 16, Marcus Westlake. Did have a bit of a struggle in his first game. You know? Right, and I think it may have been uh, like a lot of these kids who haven't played a lot of 11-man game, uh, a bit of deer in headlights, uh, a bit caught out by the speed of the game and just having more bodies on the field. I think he'll, he'll have a better showing in this game just because he's got that first game out from under uh, his, his belt. Well, there's his first... Strong. There's his first completion of the game. That'll get the confidence going. Nothing like making your first completion to get, uh, to get the uh, uh, pre-game butterflies out, so... Let's go uh, from here. A few hellos to the people tuning in. Kevin Wilson, the uh, former WA Raiders junior head coach, now the women's outback coach. He's watching in from, well, I would assume WA, but the guy is a world traveler. He could, he could be, be anywhere. anywhere. He could be on the field here. 
Matthew Noonan's also watching in. Martin Muck, one of the officials over in Perth, checking in. And the crowd has gotten a lot louder strong now. Strong arm, strong arm, just out by a couple of feet. And that's exactly right, that is. We talked, about, talked it to death in that first game. Westlake has got quite the cannon if he can get it together. Steps in there under pressure. We like to see that with the young quarterback, uh, not, not hearing or seeing footsteps, just stepping in and firing the ball. Just out by a little bit. Receiver was open. I'm trying to hit Kiffin Gibbs. Kiffin Gibbs. We'll give a couple different pronunciations if I think there's potential alternatives. Let's try to get it right at some point. Yeah, apologies day. if we get things wrong. We'll do our very best to get things right. And look at this, a couple of... Oh, that's an interesting sign by the up-back. This oh, punt is danger, going to be a bit of a struggle. Danger, very danger. Working his way back into the action, though, was Jerry Venturis, who actually turns this into a pretty half-decent punt, yeah, well done. given the circumstances. Well done under pressure there. Got themselves out of, a, out of a world of grief just then. Um, stepped in and put a, a, a good-sized 13 boot through that football. Went a long way. Indeed. Now, Coach, obviously, you're in your local state, and a lot of the coaches know you. Mm. You know, people have been getting you to check out their players, seeing where you can offer tips. Have you been getting to know any of the players through the, the camp so yeah, far? Yeah, got, got a chance to uh, hang out and, and uh, work a little bit with the, with the Raiders team yesterday, WA Raiders team yesterday. Uh, very young team. Uh, uh, Average age of 17.2 years. So there's obviously a plan, a two-year plan with the coaches to, uh, to, to blood these kids. Uh, and once again, hopefully that deer in headlights uh, first game is gone now and they can just go out and be football players. Great athletes on, on both sides of the ball. And what? coming from WA, they're, tall, they're all tall, rangy, uh, AFL-looking guys too. Indeed they are. Michael Ryan bringing back his offense on the field. He gets his day going with a nice run on the ground. He connected with Liam Brown for the Wolverines. One touchdown in game one. I had a feeling in the first game that he could have done that a little bit more if it was an actual zone read play where he could have kept the ball himself as the uh, defensive end crashes down. Uh, great uh, keep there uh, to get some solid yards. Obviously a conference pass. builder. And that's a nice completion picking up six yards on second down. Or maybe make that four yards. So good run and then a followed by completion that his confidence should be building from here. Bear with us, unfortunately, we are still looking for a new timekeeper here on site. Miles Newman, I think, has taken off for the day. Selfish. So, we will try to keep you updated with time and down and distance as best we can. Currently, it's third down. Wolverines with their first third down conversion opportunity of the day. And he'll throw to the flat. It's complete, but it's a great open field tackle. Is yep. that a fumble? They'll call it down. A great tackle there by Zane Grigorovic. You like to see good closing speed from defensive back, so it uh, doesn't matter that the receiver made the catch, he was able to close very, very quickly and make the play and uh, stuff that completion for a very short yardage. It's about knowing the down and distance, right? Yes, it is. Can you allow a catch? Yes, yep, it doesn't matter that he made the catch, it uh, doesn't count for much as far as yardage goes. Still a nice confidence builder for the for the quarterback, knowing that he is on target. So this will be fourth down. New South Wales sending out their punt unit. Back to punt for them is Ryan Mulvaney. Bit of a utility on this team. He's rolling out right, the chappy roll, roll out. And he'll turn it into a run for Western Australia. This is a great start. That was never on. Defensively, and I thought he was rolling out to punt it. He decided to keep it, and he's just gifted Western Australia. It was Australia. never on. I don't, I don't know what he saw there because uh, there was quite a few uh, Raiders players just waiting for him to smother him right there. So uh, good field position for the Raiders, which they did not have against Queensland. Ryan Evans. Uh, so let's see what we do here on, on the Raiders side of the ball. Tackling him down there. Glimpses of the Wolverines there. Five on the line for the uh, Raiders. They're going to try and shut down this run, and that's exactly what they do. 
knifing straight through the middle there is a, a very large unit. Joseph Lotaraka. You see him right in the middle of the screen there, just powering through. Through his uh, offensive blocker out of the way and uh, smothered a much small, smaller man. And that has been an ongoing thing here with the various levels of big men and smaller linemen about trying to match up your linemen with yeah, well, I, I think there? with someone as, as large as that, there's going to have to be some kind of double team. Otherwise, he's, he's, he will start to dominate. Nice West throw Lake. into double coverage. Looking for a throw there to uh, Lockie Pink, who has had to fight through a little bit of injury to play today. Yeah, like coming, coming to off a groin injury in the first game. That, anyone could have come down with that. Although it was uh, a double team, Lockie can jump out of a room. He's got very good hops great athlete but uh, great uh, sideline to sideline at least middle of the field to sideline defense by the free safety who read that very very well good closing speed once again Black Morgan Monk on the coverage back to live action Westlake high snap oh, it's over dear. his head he'll have to eat it and he'll hopefully recover does he though New South Wales may have taken this away. Yes, yes they have. Wolverines ball coming up with it is Joseph Lataraka. And that, kids, is why you hustle to the whistle. It was a non-stop engine there. He could have slowed down, but he just kept going, kept fighting. Uh, just unfortunate bounce. The ruling on the field. And then, uh, is that so the ball was fumbled, recovered the by the defense. First nothing down. Will, uh, New South Wales. Will, uh, will uh, hurt a team more than turnovers. That's why the turnover stats are so important. Uh, let's see if they can capitalise because now they've got the wind at their back, so to speak. Wind in their sails. Uh, let's see if they can capitalise on, uh, on, uh, on an emotional turnover as well as a, a ball turnover. Michael Ryan. Let's see if they've allowed him to take the, uh, they've taken the leash off him, allowed him to throw a bit deeper this game here. The lefties under pressure, evading as many Raiders as he can. Eventually, they take him down behind the line. Swarming I'm feeling defense. this is going to be a defensive slugger. It could very well be until uh, until something uh, pops. Uh, head coach Glenn Big Bear Bowers said that uh, uh, he made some uh, reads that uh, weren't the correct reads in the first game. So he likes to throw the ball deep, and he was looking downfield there. Defensive backs would like to call that a coverage sack. <laughs> well, getting his first sack there is big number 78, Sebastian Birch, who is the youngest player in this tournament, despite his size. He actually is 14. He had to get an exemption mm. to play in this tournament. That's how young he is. A uh, strong lump of a kid. And that will really do his confidence a world of good. Ryan with a deep drop, he's loading up and throwing long. He's got someone underneath. That is Chariot beating his man. Wonderful, wonderful catch. And picking up the Wolverines' first touchdown of the day. Well, that's what Michael Ryan likes to do. He likes to go deep. His eyes go downfield on passes uh, before he looks underneath. Uh, you'll see that Ben uh, seemed to get open late, but he would have won that route early on at the line of scrimmage, beat his men at the line of scrimmage, and then just speed, speed, speed. Lovely thrown ball to lead him onto that. He's an outback player from two campaigns now, uh, Ben Chariot. Um, he, uh, even though his calves were cramping up in the first game and he had limited time, if he's able to run freely, he could uh, really take over a game. Well, he won't add... Oh, no, he's managed to sneak it up the right upright. Check that. Ben Chariot scores six and then adds another one via his right boot. The score, seven to nil in favour of the home team, the New South Wales Wolverines. Both sets of coaches know each other from the Outback programs just being around the game for quite a while. So this would be an interesting chess game to see uh, how one coach responds to whatever the other coach is doing. They know each other very, very well. Uh, so we'll see what happens as the game develops. See what uh, Coach Kerr and his, and his staff come up with to counter whatever the New South Wales uh, team is doing. And of course, vice versa. The wind is starting to really pick up here. Yeah, we might actually be able to get rid of some of that in there in the audio for you. Chariot kicking off. 
think. The wall of blockers in front. Let's see what he does with it. He tries to fight through a couple defenders there as we make it the number of that player. I think it was Connor Young Free. Connor Young Free. He's, uh, he's their starting free safety now, but he came into camp as a wide receiver. Coach Curry said, they said, let's give you a shot at free safety. And he says he will never play a game at wide receiver ever again. What they really liked about him was his closing speed, his knowledge of the offensive side of the ball, and he really can get from sideline to sideline very quickly. And to play on the defense, you've got to be slightly unhinged. You've got to love, you've got to, love to, to hit people, and he certainly does love to hit people. In that case, uh, carrying the ball strongly. In this trip sets that every uh, all offenses seem to love in this tournament. They'll go to a bit of a screen, if you will, at the F uh, Fletcher Dingham. Absolutely key on those wide swing passes for the for the peri perimeter blocking to be sound. And you'll see here if the wide receivers don't get their blocks, the defense is able to close on that and make the play. So if the if the if the coaches were able uh, were, uh, would be saying anything to the wide receivers, there is uh, stay with your blockers longer, stay with your blocks longer. And Lucky Pink certainly tries. So that's Dignam. Good swarming defense from New South Wales, though. That's what you want to see on the defense. Uh, just the uh, engines that don't stop. Just run, 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 mm -hmm. flow, flow, flow. And Kevin Chen's about to give us a call, and we'll hush up. Illegal formation on the offense. That penalty is declined, bringing up second down. Illegal formation on the offense there, and given the nature of the play, the <coughs> result of the play, I should say, the Wolverines declined the penalty, they'll take the result, and we will move on. It's been short passing, short passing, short passing. Let's see if the, if the plan is to rope the defense and to keep looking short and then go behind at some point. Oh, there's, there's a, a bit fake. Of a, yeah, a shoulder fake. Oh, what a great read. One player wasn't faked out, and that was the deep safety. For the Wolverines, uh, Fifield, Felia Tua. Great flow to the ball there. Because it was on, the play was on. The fake screen, wheel route by number 14, Lockie Pink. The, the play was on, but great closing speed uh, from the flip free safety. You'd really want to see that from your defense. This time they flipped the formation. The three of them, was out to the left now. Lucky Pink's going over the middle. He'll hit Pink. No, it isn't. Green helmet. Flags down. Making the catch is uh, Zaya De La Franca. Iggy, I believe his nickname is. We saw there the, the strength of uh, the quarterback's arm really stepped in and rifled that ball in there. Short gain. See the result of his play is after the flag. Kevin Chen about to give us the call. Holding on the offense, number 66. That penalty is declined, bringing up fourth down. Pinged for a holding call there is Brereton Littlecott, one of the more experienced linemen, the outback representative on that offensive line. You can see on there three different outback helmets. You see quite a few uh, yellow helmets, gold helmets through this tournament. The lads don't often get the chance to wear their gold helmets, so that's a, it's a real pride thing for the lads who, who have uh, been able to represent the country in the past. Coming up to play some press coverage. Oh, the Wolverines, the battle on the line. Fourth, Westlake. fourth down, is it? And they're going for it. They are indeed on fourth and three. Westlake looking long though for Pink. Pink's got it over his shoulder. He's got it in stride. It's a foot race, and it's one he will get to all the way to the five. But flags are the down. Late, a late flag. It'll be a face mask, I believe, where uh, the the tackler got an arm in there. Lovely work to win on the line of scrimmage, and you see, see his speed. We all see his speed there, was able to uh, accelerate off the ball, but touchdown saving tackle, even though there was a, uh, an arm around the helmet there with his face mask. Damien Rowland. Number five, Damien Rowland can really fly. 
real during uh, the play personal the, uh, foul face mask number five on the defense half distance penalty half distance, so automatic first down line. so ultimately he doesn't actually give up that much no in those situations no, uh, those times, it, the penalty doesn't really hurt you uh, and, uh, and really important there to save the touchdown. Anything can happen here. Obviously, an advantage Raiders, but uh, a strong defensive stand can really change things right here. Westlake may be looking to throw his first touchdown of the tournament. He'll have to wait. Lovely ball on that pass. It was, uh, fell right in the bucket in stride for Lockie Pink. And that's the end of the first quarter, it might be. No. False Time start out. on the offense, number 21. Five yard penalty, replay, we'll first down. That's a real coach killer there. Oh, I think that's why he's being taken off the field. Kirby Dagui. Sorry, Diagui. Diagui. Please, Dugui. someone. Dagui. <laughs> Dagui. Let's call it Dagui. From the West Side Steelers. So backed up a little bit, and uh, let, let's say they've got more room to work now. It's a real cup half. Empty guy, aren't you? Oh, full, I should say. Let's let's <laughs> call it that. So receiver's got more room to work. Westlake looking right, looking for the isolated receiver. There it is. And it's a fade, and it's oh, been knocked down. He had it. It was there. Great defensive play. Who was that? Number 37? Did I, did I get Bailey see that right? Beckingham thought he had it. He even remonstrated with the referee, saying, how long do I need to hold that for that to be a touchdown? It's a beautiful catch, but then playing to the whistle. 87. 87 is Mitchell in there with, King. With 31, I think I saw there. Harrison Walker. Certainly went up and high point of the ball, which is they've been working on that quite a bit. Yeah, but it's the experienced Mitchell King who plays the hands to the end. Yeah, Gary Big Hands Johnson with a rip out there. Westlake the still out there. looking oh, for his first one. It's tipped. Three different back. players could have caught that ball. <laughs> Three different sets of hands, and it's incomplete. A bit of frustration from some of the New South Wales DBs who'd thought they had picks. If you saw the quarterback's eyes there, he was locked onto the one receiver. Uh, he may have had a, an outside receiver breaking inside on a slant that, uh, that had a step on his defender, but he was locked on the one inside receiver. And uh, I think the defense saw that as well. Was able to read the quarterback's eyes and make a jump on the ball. Lucky Pink, who made the catch to get him here on the outside. But Westlake will go to the right. He'll try the isolated receiver on this land. He's thrown a pick. And the goal line, they're returning at a convoy ahead of him. He's looking for blocks. I still can't make out the number, but he gets it all the way to the 50. It's the man who ripped the ball out. Last play, Mitchell King on his second Wolverines tour has intercepted a pass on the goal line. Once again, locked onto the one receiver. 87 Mitchell King was able to read that, get a good jump on it. And we mentioned earlier, turnovers absolutely destroy momentum. And what we want to see from the, from the Raiders is uh, uh, that the shoulders and the helmets aren't dropping, that, they, that the, spirit st the spirit stays positive. And he, I think he, he, there I say, coach, but I think Before he decided to pre and throw that yeah, His foul. eyes looked right, his whole body language looked right. Number 61 and 66 was, was on WA. 20, uh, that 15 yard penalty be added just, to the just, end just of the slide return. Slide across, First down, New South Wales. Follow the eyes and hit him, hit Mitchell King right between the 8 and the 7. And then the convoy in front, 50 yards or so of return. Uh, we love to see big guys get in front of the skinny guys for the downfield blocking. Mm -hmm. Always playing to the whistle. And I saw some uh, Raiders helmets drop. As soon as the interception was, ma was made, they stopped running. They, they switched off. Allowed New South Wales to get a, a very good return on the interception. Momentum swing once again after that's such a great catch and uh, drive uh, with lucky catches uh, uh, catch. The five-yard penalty with the jump uh, offsides. And we, uh, what we missed out there... Uh, amongst all that, it was there was a chop block plenty that's added another 15 yards to the end of the run. Great first, field position. Now. First down and 10. Michael Ryan steps in, fires. Oh, that it, could be live. No, thought that might have been wasn't lateral. Yeah, thought that might have been live for a second. His weight was going backwards there. He didn't step into that pass, which means the ball was going to always fade backwards, rather than you see his weight wasn't right. Although he had he had uh, hands in his face. 
Very good uh, uh, defensive end or outside linebacker coming in to crash into his face, and then that probably threw him threw him off. Made a very good difficult uh, opportunity for the receiver. And now another oh. look at this: two tight ends to the left, running strength to the left, passing strength out to the right. They like this formation because they, they feel they have a matchup and different blocking angles. Uh, with a tight end in there. Not many teams run a tight end these Oh, days. and it's been a lost ball. The Raiders oh, are on it. Oh, dear. And you see the, the, the Raiders' sideline and everyone else just just uh, get really fired up about another turnover. And you see here, I don't know what happened. I think, the, I think it might have been a situation where both players thought the other player was taking it or keeping it. I don't it. know if that was a, 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 a read for the quarterback or if it was just a straight give. Uh, it's certainly with the, the mesh with the running back wasn't clean and uh, good uh, awareness from the WA defense to pounce on that where everyone else was wondering where the ball was. Rujgis Berg, the running back in that play, but we're covering that with Sam Oldfield. So we mentioned it might may be a bit of a defensive uh, a battle right now. Uh, the, de the offenses just need to fire, need to need to settle down a bit. Westlake now. Westlake looking left. He thought he wanted big. No, he was looking for his man uh, Fletcher Dignam, but Fletcher well, Dignam seemed it. to slow down a bit uh, yeah, mid route. If he kept running, he could have possibly run onto that. A few steps before the camera caught up to him, just uh -huh. then uh, he said, Personal to slow foul, down and start roughing the passer, the number 91 on the roughing defense. The passer, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Right. Joseph Lotaraka there being pinged for roughing the passer, so the Raiders will get marched up the field for 15 yards. You can see in the background there, the junior outback head coach and John Hollywood Ray having a chat with Miles Newman, who thought was in the booth doing the scoreboard, clearly not. Centre uh, Blake Mitchell ready to snap this back to Westlake. Westlake patiently waits, now he's got to move. He takes a slide there, doesn't want to deal with any risky business, Did actually picks up at a yard or two. Did not want to mix it up with uh, headhunting linebackers who were just waiting for him. Not a bad decision there. That's something, a bit of self-preservation. I don't mind. How's the old saying? You can't, uh, you can't lose money if you're making a profit. So a one-yard gain is a one-yard gain. Good awareness from the quarterback to uh, slide away from the oncoming defense and uh, make something positive out of not, not, not very much. Not not really going through a lot of different formations. Happy to stay in this three by one spread set. Westlake Little pitching it out. He'll get met in the middle though. They Kirby. were trying to get outside, but the outside containment was very, very good. Forced him back inside. And that's where all the defensive help is. So we see number 21, Kirby. Kirby Degui trying to get outside. Injury timeout. No, say the defense. And stuffed on the inside. Injury. Now, going towards an injury timeout. Making that stuff, though, is the big man. Number 99, Denzel Banaba. Oh, I think it was actually the 71, no? Big man here. Look on the screen here. Good reverse angle of it. And whoosh. Yeah, number 71 made the play, but number 99 had the outside and contained yes. force to get back inside. And Mika Benson getting on the stat sheet there. And obviously with the help of Banaba, who recorded the first points for the Wolverines with a safety back on day one. In talking to uh, the, the head coaches, uh, they almost all say that not a lot of their guys, uh, these young kids, have had experience in playing 11-man. So a running back who's used to playing 9-man would probably be able to make some yardage on that play. But with extra people, the, the running lanes are closed very, very quickly. And uh, the speed of the game and the extra people uh, make, a, make a big difference. So. Uh, you'll see the ball carriers, especially running backs who have had experience in 11 man, uh, uh, do usually do better than the, the young guys. The young guys, it, take, it takes them a little while to get used to one, the speed of the game, and two, the, the running lanes close very, very quickly, so the decisions have to be made a whole lot quicker than the, what they're used to. Diagui is the player down for the Raiders. You can see the stands now. Obviously, the home team, Blaine, New South Wales, so a lot of guys coming up to Narrabeen. 
to watch. But also a lot of the South Australian players. It looked like the entire team might have been taking up a section there. Met some of the lads uh, from the previous game. Lovely lads. Come over and introduce themselves. If you're in the neighbourhood, or if you're not in the neighbourhood, come down to Narrabeen on a wonderful uh, uh, afternoon to watch some uh, high-level junior football. Yeah, realistically, these are some of the names you might hear more and more coming out with some of the college opportunities heading their way. Uh, when uh, involved in the, in the outback camps, when the American coaches ask, how many of you players would like to go and play in America? Almost every single hand pops up. Uh, everyone would like a shot to go uh, to, to go and play in the States. Uh, not many players, though, are willing to sacrifice uh, mm. what it takes to get over there. And there's the day one results. Queensland and Victoria, South Australia, those three teams picking up two competition points. And then on day two... So Queensland advancing to 2 0, Victoria adding another two points, and then obviously the results yet to be seen between Western Australia and New South Wales. So, two top of the table players right now with Queensland and Victoria. Queensland just doing what they do machine like pre uh, precision. Uh, they've had year after year of just uh, uh, great coaching and uh, transfers onto the, on, onto the field where. They just seem to do things uh, quicker and better than a lot of other teams do. Look at this, our uh, scoreboard. Now we have a timekeeper, a scorekeeper in there. Westlake looking for pink. Overthrows there on the coverage. It was on. Is Fairfield a failure to her? It was certainly on. Once again, the arm strength on show there from, from, uh, from Westlake. Marcus Westlake. Strongly steps in. Well, just I'm, off. I'm seeing on the back side. It looks like we've got some sort of cover two action. It might be quarters on the uh, the, the receiver strength there, but he's seen that and immediately want to hit this, wanting to hit the same. Right. Exactly. They'll move Lockie around, Lockie Pink around. He can play out wide with his with his height, but he's also he's got quickness and smart, so they can play him in the slot as well. Two deep safeties. Two here. deep safeties. Let's see what the corners do. Westlake, he sees the coverage there, pulls it back under pressure, rolling out to his left, getting out of bounds, gets hit as he exits the field. Making that play there was Lachlan Bignall, one of the defensive captains. And knifing in through was number 91 for the, for the Wolverines, Joseph Lataraka, that made the quarterback pull the ball and step up and change what he had to do. He's been making a lot of plays there, Lataraka. He's having a good afternoon. Defensive line coach, I'd be proud of that. Usually the defensive line coach are the most insane coaches on the staff, <laughs> so they should be yelling and screaming happy with his lad. Not sure who it is, but it could very well be the DC, Mitch Walner. Could Mitch be, will be loving that. Obviously not the DC, but I would be surprised if he's handling the D-line himself as well. Shout out to Mitch, who's slightly unhinged at the most at the best of times <laughs> and that pass is incomplete intended for the number 19 Connor Moore or Mauer and this is my case. So I've got the house. big Jake Edwards there starting center for the Wolverines and Gigi with him as well. If I saw that right, the quarterback has the option of either handing that off or, or swinging it out wide, depending on how the defense lines up. So if the cornerbacks are back, the outside play is on. Still two tight ends out to the left-hand side, flanking Jacob Scheel. Ryan will hand this off. It's another oh, fumble! Oh dear. That is not a good start of the day. Ball for security Michael is job Ryan. security, as I like to say. <laughs> for Michael Ryan and Kai Rujgisberg. Everything's good up until a big paw gets in there and rips the well, ball out. Don't know if we can take a look at that on slow mo. Let's see if we can get it on this angle. Oh, they've read my mind. Handoff is solid. Eyes are downfield. 
The relay on the field is the ball was fumbled, recovered by WA. First down, WA. 34. Maybe it was 84. Kai Torsvik, the free safety coming down. Maybe it was 24. Eighty-four. Eighty-four. Kai Torsvik. Eighty-four. Uh, receiver's yeah, number yeah, playing runs. on defense. You know that means just prove that they couldn't catch once upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> that old chestnut. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. And has been the reoccurring theme of the day. Seven nil. Wolverines currently defending at that lead. With the Western Australian Raiders. Decent field position, swing wide. And here we go. Decent Zane blocking on the perimeter, which we love to see us skinny guys blocking on the outside. Looking for an injury timeout here. And we talk about when uh, receiver Officials gets a block timeout. outside there for his brother injury. running back. That is that should be the pride in that block should be as if you've made the play yourself, as if you've carried the ball yourself for those extra yardage. That is all downfield blocking. You see downfield Lockie Pink. Block, block, block. He's uh defender number twenty makes the play eventually. Like Morgan Monk. Like Morgan Monk, that's the the uh Why don't we take the a look cornerback? while there's an injury timeout? We'll uh, eventually take a look. The law firm, that's what I was looking for. The <laughs> law firm, Blake Morgan Monk. And coming in on Thursday, New South Wales. They'll close out their regular season, if you will, games against the All-Stars. Sharks, they'll be taking on the Western Australian Raiders and Queensland in what will probably dictate first and second seed. Uh, well, shall I say it will dictate first and second Absolutely. seed. It will be the Queensland and Victoria game. That'll be a cracker because uh, obviously Queensland have got uh, uh, a, a great a great deal of confidence. They always have had. Uh, the other teams would say cockiness, but uh, that, that confidence comes from just getting the runs on the board over and over and over again. Victoria would uh, be quite pleased with themselves. Uh, solid, very solid result against... Uh, against the Wolverines first game and, and good performance in the second game. Take a quick chance to shout out to some of our sponsors today for some of the teams and the competition. It's on its way. Well, it's Western Australia. They are sponsored by Asbestos and Demolition Specialist PCB. And the Queensland, they're sponsored by Power Crews and Village Roadshow Theme Parks. And, well, that's, apparently, that's all the sponsors <laughs> for the teams at this comp. Much appreciated. As we see, looks at, uh, coming off there, I think it's Blake Morgan Monk, as we discussed, the law firm. He's walking his way to the field a bit gingerly. You can see the pain on his face. Here come the Raiders with Marcus Westlake and his trips formation out to the left. They've really simplified things for him, haven't they? Yes, they have. Uh, one of those keep it simple, stupid, but there's a lot of things you can do out of this formation, out of the three by formation. You certainly can. A lot of mismatches. Here's Westlake. This time they'll pitch it out. Is that the do you agree? Back from injury. He's wrestling his strong way run. Forward. Strong, strong run. Kobe Diagui. And then I spoke to now injured running back Alex Endel beforehand saying who's going to be picking up the slack in your absence and he said we're going to be moving one of our fullbacks to running back. He's going to power it forward for us. We're going to grab some guys on defense. Mm. They're going to contribute. And what we always like to see is the uh, big guys around playing to the, to the, to the echo of the whistle and uh, helping their brother get downfield extra four or five yards. Westlake takes the snap 
Checks the RPO, looks for Lockie Pink, and it's another intercept. He tries to get Lockie Pink. He's, do he's threading a needle every time. And this time, again, the New South Wales Wolverines intercept him, this time via Harris Walker from the Central Coast Sharks. It looks like they were looking for uh, the fake screen out short and then try and sucker the defense in. There's the pump fake from the quarterback. And then, well read by the defense, there was what looked like two, maybe three blue jerseys around that. I'll tell you yeah. who's not getting fooled, coach. Um, and that's Fayfield uh, Fallier Tua. He's over the top of that every single time. Uh, reading the quarterback's eyes very, very well. Not, not. Uh, it would have been really easy for him to jump on that short screen route or sc short screen play, but uh, kept his depth and then flowed very, very quickly to the ball. Lockie is one of the better receivers in the country and uh, smothering him at the moment except for that one deep play. Sam Elfield on the outside. Willie Blitz, they'll send him. And running it now, I think that's Streeter. It looks like Max Hepton stall in, is in at quarterback number 11. And seems like a lot of these teams, everyone's got capable QBs at number 2. And I will make sure about these running backs here because we've got two running backs with similar builds with numbers right after each other in consecutive numbers. So in number 26 for the uh, Wolverines is Cameron Streeter. Number 27 is Luke Hawkins. So there's my one mis There's my one confusion. <laughs> uh, that, all that's all there. you're allowed, Kenny. And now it's uh, the power back and another Wobow coming into pair up with Hawkins. With a double tight end set. And the give will be to Hawkins. Hawkins reading his blocks. Jumping in, jumping out and taking it forward. Ooh, well, you did say to the echo of the whistle, coach. I did say to the echo of the whistle and that was marginal on, on that one. So it looked like a 22 formation, two running backs, two tight ends. And, well, and what that, he needs to be working is leading with the head there. Yes. The, the heavy set uh, coach Glenn Big Bear Bowers believes that the, the, the block angles changed and they have the advantage there. And not many teams will see this formation, so they'll have to adjust almost on the run to what they see. We see the lateral quickness from 27. Hawkins. Hawkins. Another Wobow. He'll get an inside going ca zone carry. Looks like defense might have forced a three and out here. I was on third down there. They're third and two. And defense has... No. Oh, I don't know. Judging from that angle, it looks pretty damn close, doesn't close, it? Close. Close. Let's see what the referees are saying. We haven't had a measure yet, and the referees say first down. Wolverine's offense will stay on the field. There's a big... What do you call him? What's his name? Big Bear. Big Bear. Glenn big Bowers. Big Bear. He said that, uh, that Monica at least for two World Cups starting in China. And Jordan Rowland was just behind him as well. And that will be the end of the first quarter. New South Wales, the only team on the board so far. They lead Western Australia seven points to nil, followed by a Ben Chariot touchdown via the arm of our quarterback, Michael Ryan. So... Two big plays, at least a big play from each of the offences. One to Ben Sherratt for the touchdown, one to Lockie Pink down to the two-foot line, which was unfortunately nullified by uh, following penalties and then a turnover. Uh, dominated first quarter by turnovers, unfortunately. Or if you're a defensive uh, focus, fortunately. We mentioned earlier that it was going to be a, a defensive arm wrestle and it'll take individual efforts or a little bit of luck uh, to, to break free from one side or the other. And we all know the harder you work, the luckier you are. Yeah, it might resemble a game that took place back in 2013 when these two teams took each other on in a national championship. The score ended up being 6-0 in one of the uh, most physical, defensively talented games I've ever seen. Hepsenstall. 
He's going long off a three-step drop. He's got his man. That is a big chunk of yardage underneath that ball is Connor Moore. Great adjustment to the ball. Lovely lead by the quarterback. Uh, but with someone hanging off his back there, Connor Moore was able to make a really good play. That'll fire up a sideline. That'll fire up a team. Getting beaten there is the, uh, the free safety. And Connor Young free. It does start with a protection. Quarterback had a nice clean pocket, was able to step into that and uh, get the ball off. Lovely pass. Here goes Maluabao. Met just after the line. Solid tackle and a nice little win there for the defense. Maybe only giving up a yard or two. We see the inside linebacker step in. Crunch-a-rama. Making the tackle there is... Nafareem Smith. Good run, good tackle, so win-win on both sides of the ball. And at running back now is Cameron Streeter in number, jersey number 26. Skeets, I call him. And of course, you would have known him throughout back. I actually, I'll take, I'll t I don't mind big noting myself on this. When mm -hmm. I when I coached uh, in high schools, going around as a, uh, a wanna be PE teacher. Oh, wait a minute, ball chariot. It's long. No, it's not chariot. It's number one, Jalele Depsy. No touchdown. He's dropped just short, but Heps is still launching bombs. And young Dempsey came off a bit of a, a shoulder injury after the first game. He was a, a bit questionable for this game, so this will do his confidence a world of good. Great oh, reach out, long arms on that. Personal oh, foul. Another clean pocket for roughing the Roughing the passer. Number 23 on the defense. Half distance penalty. Uh, Automatic passer, first down. Attach that, and once again, it's one of those situations where despite it being a, a big penalty, usually a 15-yarder, it's actually only going to... Add another three, maybe two yards. To the half end the of that distance, bloke, yeah. Giving you half the distance. Cameron that could Street. have very easily been a touchdown. Very, very much. If it wasn't IFAF rules, or <laughs> NFL, he would have been running up a touchdown. So he stopped just shy of the end zone. It's right in front of us here in our major of commentary booth. Street is in the backfield with Nelly Wobbo at fullback. This should be a power play. And they'll give it to Streeter. He'll jump, cut, and work his way. He's lost the ball. But they've called it, I think, a touchdown. A coach, I don't know if you can see. No, I can't from here. sideline guy. I don't understand how that could be two yards short when he was still up. It's either a fumble or it's... Ball security, lads. Ball security. That's a very interesting decision to pull that down so quickly. I don't know about that, but... Ball starts coming out now. Like he's not, a, he, that should be it's a, a rip by. Yeah. Oh. Great defensive player getting a, a, a pour in there, ripping and tearing the ball out. And which is a slow mo. I think he's going to prove that there's offense, offense, going offense. on. The ruling on the field is we have an inadvertent wow. whistle, immediately recovered by New South Wales. Good call, Mr. DeRuz. Second down. So, inadvertent whistle, someone's blown a whistle for no reason. And that is a huge let off for the Wolverines. But geez, well, three different backs right now mm. losing the football. Ball mm. security is seemingly a struggle for the Wolverines. Charge team timeout. WA, that is their first. Uh, WA will take a timeout after that. I think they needed just to level out the, uh, the emotion after a play like that or a non play like that. Yeah. Yeah, there's a coaches call just to calm everyone down a great opportunity to punch it in here but we just need to um, get on top of our emotions and just execute I was starting to mention earlier that uh, I went out to Cameron St Street of school high school a couple of years ago and I uh, was teaching flag football and uh, he was a real standout from the from the rest of the lads and we started chatting uh, uh, over a, a period of weeks and I said well why don't you give this game a go 
and all of a sudden here we are at uh, next minute. at uh, at representative level. It actually came out came across with us to Mexico, so great little story there. Yeah, obviously that's how a lot of it starts. Like, truth be told, you could argue that's how I got it involved. I certainly know that's the case for. A, a lot of different people, people mm. who volunteer their time. Quite that Someone time. taps you on the shoulder and try, try this strange sport to go, and all of a sudden you fall in love with it. And next minute you're dedicating hours well beyond what it's worth. Mm. <laughs> and, and he's one of the lads that really does put in, put in the work. He's sacrificed uh, uh, a lot of things to, uh, to become a better and better player and ultimately a better and better person that uh, this, this game teaches you. 7-0. Wolverines looking to add a second score to the board. Coming into the field now, Corey Dean, at wide receiver. Look at the size of big Villa oh, uh, Lolo Lolo, right oh, guard. Will they run behind him? Twenty-two. They will try. Streeter will push this in. Touchdown, Wolverines. Cameron Streeter. just saw their big men and got pushing forward coach a lot of big guys just pushing and shoving and uh if you have a look the the blues had uh better pad level got underneath their defensive counterparts and were able to to, to use uh, leverage and, and angles to uh, uh give a pathway for us uh, for skeets to get in there had to do some work himself it wasn't it wasn't just uh falling across the line but great job by the big dogs up front. That is an offensive line touchdown. Jake Sadyan almost getting him for the backfield, but Streeter getting away. They kicked an extra point the first time around, but this time they're sending Heptastall back in to try and add two. Another change in the backfield. Rojkas Berg is out from the doghouse after his fumble. He's back in the game. A little wobble in front of him. Chance to redeem himself. Oh, no, oh, dear. Call it and then. Bit of confusion there. Not sure if what that was called for. If that was a timeout or a. Oh, the right side seemed to have jumped. Maybe we can take a look. Looking at the right side of the line. False start. <laughs> Offense number seven. Yeah. Five yard penalty. Repeat try. Jeff. Another coach killer. And a lot of big bodies out there. Oh, actually, now no, they're going for the PAT. Yep. So Ben Chariot will be back. Nice long reception on that to set up that touchdown scoring drive. Kick is up. Kick is good. And the score is now 14 points to nil in favour of the team defending home turf, the New South Wales Wolverines. The difference between uh, the long play that uh, New South Wales is able to to, to get was they were able to now consolidate with a touchdown. Uh, when WA got their long play with Lockie Pink down the far sideline, they were not able to consolidate. And that could have been the difference if they were able to score then, it would have been 7 all. Uh, diff completely different game. Now 14 0 New South Wales. And uh, it's up to now uh, the Raiders to um, put some plays together, get some, um, get some momentum up. Well, we'll get an opportunity now. Marcus Westlake already finalising final notes with his OC, Doran Honda. Very knowledgeable OC for, for the Raiders. Yeah. Very, very knowledgeable. Plenty of wraps on him. Chariot boots this downfield. In the sun on the eyes of Lockie... Nope, not a Lockie Pink. Zan Gregorovich. Look at him shoving players away. Maybe sometimes having defensive players at returners. 
Well, to play special teams, you have to be brave because there's bodies flying everywhere, and quite often the, the bravest players are the defensive guys. They're the ones that are slightly unhinged. Corey. I know I've used that phrase a few times now. <laughs> Corey Dean, copping a shot there. Fourteen nil now. Start of the second. In the sun. I think you'll find there is no chair under that. As Miles Newman tries to sneak into the commentary booth, realising there's no actual chair underneath him. Tries to find the edge, and uh, New South Wales able to collapse the edge for not much gain, one or two yards. See now, Westlake getting that. Jeez, he left it late to try and get that snapped, didn't he? Yep. On the outside, Kiffin Gibbs taking the end around. Looking down at 2nd and 12th. Plenty of time in this second quarter to, to, to get things done, to get some momentum happening. Let's see what they do. They rush 5. Westlake Outside gets it screen. out real quick. Jacob O'Halloran making that reception. And he's taken down to back into the uh, towards the middle of the field. Making the tackle is Connor Eldridge on the few Central West Giants on this turn. The Raiders have a series of screens out of that three by formation and uh, either the number one, two or three receiver can get the ball and it's up to the other two receivers to get the downfield blocks. Not a bad job on that play. A bit of an under formation here, the Wolverines. Westlake's under pressure oh. and he's slammed down to the turf. Taking him down is Lachlan Bignall. And beating the left tackle is Bignall. Outside in on... Uh, really knifing through there, Bignall. Yeah, it, was, it sets up. Sam Allison, we don't get to see it there, but he gave Allison a hard outside move and then cut back inside him. And he might be able to get there. We go, wide shot of it here. Wow, that's strong. And we'll that's very, very strong. Allison, the left tackle there, just really did not get, want to get beaten by Sam the Sam Allison move. is no slouch. Allison, however, worth noting, whilst ejected in the first game, Western Australia put in an appeal, which is still ongoing, therefore, he is allowed to play in this game. A review it will be taking place tonight, so there's a chance he may be able to play on Thursday's games as Western Australia takes the timeout here on fourth down. Charge team timeout. WA. That is their second timeout of the half. One remaining, if memory serves correctly. New South Wales has a full complement of timeouts left. There's the official count is eight minutes and three seconds remaining in the first half. And Miles is in the back of the car with a comma and I respond to the director in my ear. Hmm. <laughs> and, and I think you might have heard that in comms, but instructions have been told for all non-commentary to be to exit the booth. Oh, I'll leave. I haven't said anything. I'm just sitting down. <laughs> Miles re <laughs> remonstrates, but I'm just dealing with the forces above me, mate. 14 nil, New South Wales leads WA. Mitch Wall now laying down the law there for his defense. And we see both teams now, I think we're in that period where both teams are trying to take a breath. Figure out what's going on. I thought maybe that uh, head coach Michael Kerr would uh, change and possibly go for it, being the gambler that he that he is. Aggression, aggression, aggression. But uh, there's the oh. chappy rollout. Roll out. And that will 
be marked out of bounds. Actually, it's a solid punt. It'll be marked around the 25, it's I think. Bur buried them. That's a, that's a very good effort. Number seven, Bailey Beckenham. With a big boot there. So some work for the uh, Wolverines to get out of their own uh, and tw uh, around the 20-yard line. First and 10 now for the Wolverines. Now you can see it. Well, there's all this shade now across the uh, the northern part of the field, if my compass is correct. And you can see some of the guys now actually trying to keep warm <laughs> with some of this breeze coming across here. Some of that northern beach breeze here in Narrabeen. The big guys will be loving it. Oh, of course. Heps and soul. Target's right, but he's not going to be able to release it. For a moment, it looked like he, ha he had a clean pocket, but it collapsed very, very quickly. And taking him down, I didn't quite catch the number. I, I'm not calling from the 50 there. We're calling off the screen as well, so... I might wait for the replay to credit that player with the sack. You can see the size of big... Sebastian Birch there, or Seb, as he's more commonly known as, at defensive tackle. Hit the soul again after a 10-yard sack. Second and 20. Stump a give to Rodriguezberg. He makes up some of that yardage, gets it back to where I think he might have actually picked up close to 10 yards on that play. Big hole opened up. Number 76 leading through. Yeah, a bit of a... Jacob Shield, play. outback player. Wouldn't want to get in his way. That's a pretty solid chemistry with his, uh, his centre, Jacob Edwards, now. Both those guys have played outback and two uh, wolf... Well, not wolfback, but Wolverine camps together. Dropping back to pass protect now. And Heptensoul's losing oh ground and he's taken down for another big sack. Oh dear. Again, can't quite make out the defender. We'll check it out on the replay. And getting it amongst it is Ashley Raven. Looking like JJ Watt there, number 99. Ashley Raven. Good wheels to chase down the quarterback. Ticking under six minutes now. We're in the second quarter. Third and 11. Oh, sorry, third and... Well, it's more than 11, I'll tell you that. We got third and forever. Third and uh, Bondi, I heard you yeah. call it the other day. Yeah. Furthest players I could think of. <laughs> <laughs> it was fourth and 25. And this was oh, not dear. filled cleanly by Young Free, but no one's close enough. Young Free tries his speed, but eventually... Oh, is taken down by the gunner Ryan Mulvaney. Right in the sun it looked. There's some sun, there's there's some breeze that makes the ball swirl around a bit, especially if it's a come comes off the foot a little bit funny. It's almost like he had so much time he had to think about catching the ball rather than just reacting and being an athlete. It can be like that sometimes, can't it? Absolutely. 5-21. There's Cameron Streeter on the sideline with the rest of his Wolverines teammates. A bit of a change in the D-line. I think they've had a bit of a bit of an interchange. And there goes Westlake throwing out to the left. Hitting at Jacob O'Halloran, but for a minimal game, might have actually lost some yards. Another one, another one of their screen package plays where they'll uh, hit a short receiver, you see the quarterback's eyes went right and then flashed to the uh, thro and throw to the left. But uh, once again, a great swarming defense from the Wolverines. You saw quite a few blue jerseys absolutely hustle and swarm onto the ball carrier. Didn't leave much chance for the blockers. Second and 10, following the failed screen. Westlake 
Pink with the right hand slot. He's going to target him. It's a bit short of his wide receiver. Can't connect. Pink throws his hands up saying, come on, man. It's one of the few plays where the ball either came out front. I don't think it was tipped here. But yeah, come I on, think it may was. have been tipped. If that was a, a tip from the defensive play, that was a great play because uh, Lockie Pink certainly was open. Certainly would have got some positive yards there. Back to live pictures now. Third and ten for the, uh, the Western Australian Raiders. Lucky pink right slot. O'Halloran outside of him. Westlake Ooh. almost intercepted. Making a play on that pass was Connor Aldridge. Got an early jump on that. So whatever he saw, he was like he was in the huddle for the offense and saw that ball coming his way. Great break on the ball. Actually, credit to Lockie Pink there. I think he turned into a defender last second. Uh, he had to. He, out. he had to. That could have been... He, uh, Aldridge would have still been running had he caught that. 14 points, the difference. Let's see. A bit of a swap here. It's a dangerous time just before the half where... Uh, if you get something positive happening, you get that momentum going into into the into the change room. So, uh, very very dangerous time because some players could start could be looking for half time already. Special teams unit out now, and a roll and punt. It's a high punt, and will go out of bounds inside the twenty. Looks like it'll eventually be marked. No, nope. outside the twenty, it'll be marked on the uh, Wolverines twenty three. Wolverines. We'll take over now and they would love to try to get to that three score buffer before the end of the half there is something mentally difficult about trying to succumb trying to overcome a three score deficit especially if they were to score now uh, that would mean that the, all the momentum would be with the Wolverines and you'd see some uh, uh, dropped heads and shoulder pads going into the into the change rooms hard for the coaching staff to deal with um, a, a, a two touchdown buffer is, is very, very manageable. That's just, you know, two big plays or a turnover and things can change. Three, a little bit different. Number eight. Yeah, Michael Ryan's talking. Michael him. Ryan's back in. Lefty. Uh, it'll be a play action pass. He's blitzed, though. Flags are down. Actually, it's been a little while since we've had a flag. Fair play. And. Michael Ryan will eventually just take this out of bounds at about the line of scrimmage. See your flash here was it looked like a zone read and RPO option pass. So a lot of options for the quarterback and uh, great uh, hustle from the defense to smother everything. Offside, defense number 55, five yard penalty, repeat first Stand. down side of the defense there and some food for thought moving into halftime we are a little bit a ways away though but look tomorrow on uh, Thursday not tomorrow we got a day off tomorrow but in day three of games and with Queensland Victoria of course that means one of those teams will be moving to two and one and of course there's some head-to-head -head factors here particularly the, the Victorian Eagles have the head-to-head -head over the Wolverines but if the Wolverines gonna win here then you start talking about a fight for second they have got one win under their belt Oh, sorry, they will have one win on the belt, then going into day three with a chance to match another team's 2 and one record. It certainly would make it interesting with that scenario. And they're taking on the All-Stars, so a win here is huge for the Wolverines. And Wide open. Pass to uh, number 25, Liam Brown. Liam Brown. He's been a bit too quiet for my liking. He's supposed to be one of their primary targets. There's a look ahead to day three. New South Wales, they'll be taking on the All-Stars to start the day. The Sharks taking on the Western Australian Raiders and Queensland and Victoria. Well, it's fair to say that's the big game before we head into finals. That's the one everyone's looking forward to. Ineligible like, man downfield the the on the offense, uh, number 25. Uh, Five-yard penalty, uh, Queensland repeat first down. Just do what they do over and over and over again. They just do it very well. It'll be interesting to see what Victoria team shows up to uh, mix it with them. Penalty on the play, an eligible man downfield. So I'm releasing downfield a bit too early. Let's take a look at that again. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, 
Oh, we can't see there. We lose vision, but I think it's someone on the right side of the line. Getting down. Getting downfield, but... Yeah, I'm trying to do the maths in my head. Western Australia lose the head-to-head -head against Queensland and New South Wales. So New South Wales ideally like to win today and obviously beat the uh, All-Stars and have Victoria beat Queensland. That being said, Queensland, as it stands right now, has a much better long ball. We'll long get back ball. to that thought Jump in a second. Here. Incomplete pass intended for Jalele Dempsey. I think uh, Dempsey did a great job there of just knocking the ball away, so it was uh, uh, nullifies the interception. You see the uh, the good throwing ability by uh, Epson Store when he gets a clean pocket, but to finish that thought earlier, uh, yeah, ideal situation yeah. For, uh, for New South Wales is if they win this game and then they beat the All-Stars and Queensland loses, that would technically leave them... Personal foul. Roughing the passer, number 55 on the defense. 15 yard penalty, for automatic course, first so down. This will keep the drive alive for the Western Australia Raiders. Bit of luck for New South Wales here. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. But in any case, yeah, they would need a significant win against the All Stars because the four and against for the Queensland running is really good. Significant thing now for the world. All right, first down. But the All Stars are improving in, with every game, so it's it's not it's a given that uh, any team that plays against them will, will will win at this point. They're setting up a screen. No, nope. just a deep drop. Another sack. I think was that 99 again, Ashley Raven. Nope, it wasn't. It was the other side. Oh, no, it was Ashley Raven. We've called his name a couple of times now. I think that's one of the situations where in nine-man football, that would have been a big gap there for the quarterback to, to, to squirt through. In 11-man in football, the gaps just close very, very quickly. Add to that, the speed of the game is, is usually yeah. quicker than what they're used to. And, uh, Especially the role of a three-tack. Very, very different in 11 compared to nine. You're the outside half of you is effectively an outside, you know, is, is playing like a five tech. The Absolutely. inside of you is playing like a three tech. Yes, true. It's a, it's a tough gig. Second and 11. Ryan with Streeter flanking him to the right. Three receivers that way as well. They'll send Streeter out that way. Now is he the target? Nope. Backside slant to Liam Brown. I don't mind that at all. First down. More of that. Liam Brown over by himself, uh, singled up out here. Uh, so you, you want your good athlete singled up one-on-one -on -one out wide and just beat your man. Great ball from the quarterback. Hit him, hit him right right in the chest. That's what Glenn Bowers talked about, Liam Brown and his ability to box out, wide receiver, uh, box out defensive backs. There's an example of it right there. You mentioned earlier that he has had a quiet game so far. He's, a, he's an opportunity for him. Once again, singled out wide by himself giving him a lot of field to work with and just one-on-one. -on -one. Streeter on the flat. He wants something longer though. Over the middle, it's oh. almost intercepted and taken away by Ryan Evans. Incomplete. Two minute warning. Pass was intended for Ryan Mulvaney. Bit behind him. And uh, Liam Brown crossing from the other side. So he had two crossing routes, one from one side, one from the other. Uh, yeah, quarterback, quarterback had his uh, choice, but uh, hit the wrong guy. Yeah. That's the old shallow cross concept, right, Coach? Jeez, you're good. Oh, it's almost Jeez, like I've you're before. good. <laughs> it's not your first rodeo. 14-0. Wolverines trying to add one more score before we hit drinks. Mulvaney in motion now to the left side, making them three by one. Looking long and trying to hit his man over the middle. Oh. Chariot had it, was thinking run before he thought catch. I think he uh, had visions of uh, glory before the ball got there, as, as you say, and. Uh, 
We always thought catch the ball first. Catch the ball with your eyes. Look at all the way into your hands. There was a green helmet number 25, was it? Flying across. That yeah, may have been some footsteps that he heard uh, just before he caught the ball, mm -hmm. and making him lose concentration. But you'd expect Ben, an outback receiver, to catch that. I'm sure he'll make it up. Mm -hmm. He'll be true. very angry with himself. <laughs> He's a real perfectionist. He'll be really angry with himself. He'll, he'll, want, he'll want the ball again straight away to make up for that. Well, he's been pretty good so far. Two long bombs, one of which a touchdown in his name. Mm. Yeah. He knows he's better than that. The rest of the teammates know he's better than that, so he'll make it up. Oh, he's going to be dirty on himself. Third and ten. Let's see if he gets that opportunity. He's Here he is, in the right slot inside Liam Brown. And... It's a live game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. I was just about to say, it's up to the coaches now to have good time management with, uh, if it's right, it's 1.45 left on the clock. Well, an incomplete pass here, and the clock is stopped with around 1.40 left. That's plenty of time for WA. Absolutely. You almost got to consider, if you can't make a throw here, take the sack. Michael Ryan's got plenty of time. He loves plenty to go of deep. time. He wants to go deep. Flags are thrown. He's probably left it too long. He's oh. got Mulvaney, and Mulvaney lost the ball. The only problem is about taking too much time there. Yeah. Things start getting handy, and you see Sharrett trying to make a block there. Had Mulvaney caught the ball. I think they could be. Oh, wow. Did you see it on the quarter coach? I missed it. I don't know if we can get that replay, that exact replay once again. I think we might be seeing another ejection. Take a look. This right side. Look at, look at Liam Edwards here and throughout the screen. There We've are multiple fouls here. by both teams that will offset. Ooh. Holding you can see. offense oh, number 76. Leading, Personal leading foul, unnecessary roughness, helmet. offense. Some fists being that was, number that 74. Was that was Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number... Defense, 58. number 58. The helmet did All penalties will offset, there. replay, third down. So it'll be offsetting there, Josh Poeta and <laughs> Jake Edwards. No ejections, but they were offsetting personal fouls and coming off the field now for the Raiders is Ryan Evans. He thought he had a pick a few players ago. Mm. Now he's getting looked after. How quickly things can change. I guess fortunately for the receiver there, Ryan Mulvaney, the, 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 play, the flags were thrown and that drop catch counts for nothing. Uh, another situation, we had so much time with the ball in the air with no one around him, they had to think about catching it rather than just be an athlete, react, catch it. Yeah, that's not the case. They're the, they're the hardest sitting in the end the zone. Hardest the hardest ones where you just ha you have to wait for the ball to get to you and you have time to think. When you think... Bad things happen, and that, <laughs> exactly and that sounds right. counterintuitive. But uh, <laughs> the less you have to think on the football field, and just, oh, the, the more you react, the better the better the results are. Look at those cleats! Wow, Jeez, they're fancy nowadays, aren't Holy they? Holy cow! I never had those in my day. But say that what about are those? other things. <laughs> what are those? <laughs> <laughs> One time Th out left. For Three wide to the wide side of the field on the left here. Ryan's just gonna leg it. Good athlete, Ryan, he can good go. block there from Liam Brown. He's got the sideline. Is he smart enough to use it? Yes, he is. That'll stop the clock. And that will also be a first down. Impressive stuff. No, oh, Lucas Jeff, number seven out wide, had a great block. If he could have held it for just a few moments longer, Michael Ryan could still be running and celebrating in the end zone. If we look downfield here, this is where receivers now turn into blockers. Downfield here. Loses his man, and uh, the defender there forces the uh, quarterback out. Number 84 fights through the block. No, excuse me, number 88 fights through the block. Makes a good defensive play, ultimately. That's Tate Curtin. Disappointingly, not from the Curtin Saints. I know hmm. that. Well, now, the players are ready again. Clocks. Key Stop. first down. Huge play there using his feet. Chariot in motion. Will they go back to him? He's looking for a second chance. He'll have to block mm. here. Streeter is taken down in the backfield. A great tackle there. Making the play is Sam Oldfield, one of the leaders of this defense. 
and skates as quick as he is could not get the edge great work by uh by Sam, Sam Oldfield. That was Red very, angle. very good good play. Charge team timeout, New South about Wales. Defensively that is their first good for the half. Yes, absolutely. Down. It's all about angles, 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 angles. On the inside, the, with the big guys, it's angles and leverage. Uh, at good attack angles on defense, especially on the perimeter, is absolutely key. Otherwise, he would have caught, got caught short, and Skeets could have got the outside. And as quick as he is, anything could have happened. Second ten, you can see the commentary booth and the, the stream operation tent. For those who might have been tuned in this morning, unfortunately, Queensland was practicing their uh, PATs and one kick went quite skew if hit the tent and knocked over a hard drive that wow. set us from 100% ready to 0%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, Paul Mills and his trusted team got everything sorted and we were back ready to stream in, uh, in no time. We have a great team uh, s supporting us with the, with the coverage here. Well done, lads. You can see by the Queensland boys checking out the team. Everyone seems to be enjoying those high jump, high jump mats. They are comfortable. You know from experience? Absolutely. <laughs> but a couple of your nights have ended up on those. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> you know me too well. 14-0. It's still the same score, this final. Three minutes seemed to drag on between flags and mm. long calls. Once again, a, a key play uh, with Sam Oldfield being, being able to tackle Skeets inside it uh, forced the, uh, the clock to keep running and then a timeout by New South Wales. Second and 20. Ryan, Draw delay. Play. We haven't seen that out of New South Wales yet. It's Streeter. Streeter back to the original line of scrimmage. A nice little change up. Uh, make it look like a pass, turns his shoulders, eyes downfield, quick handoff with the, the defence on their heels, giving, giving them some angles to work with. A late flag, I didn't see what that was for. Possible holding on the outside by a receiver, uh, blocking. Oh. Kevin Chen to deliver the call, all we'll quiet down as Kevin Chen Illegal block in the back. Number seven on the yeah, offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. And we just got the call there as well, tackled into us. Illegal block in the back. Yeah, the, at, at the peripheral of the, of, the, of the shot there, you would have seen a defensive player go flying towards the sideline. Um, uh, too eager, or once again, angles, angles, angles. Wrong angle by, by the offensive uh, receiver blocking. Or just well milked by the defense. Yeah. How many times do you see a defender just try to turn his body so he just belly flops in front of the... the Academy referee. Award goes to... 14 points with 105 remaining. It's been a That's long two minutes. Yes, uh, it has. I'm running out of ways to describe the final couple of minutes. Ryan steps up. What a cup lock by Streets. Ryan still going, throws downfield. He's got someone behind the coverage, and Chariot, who again can't bring it in. He would love the start or the finish of his first half to start the way it, to finish how it started, which is two long bombs, but it's two consecutive drops for Ben Chariot. Yeah, tricky one. Bodies all over the place, but certainly catchable. Certainly catchable. Great work for by Michael Ryan, the quarterback, to make room and then get it down there. Damn. Block in the back. I think we're going to get the official call now to the stream. Pass interference. Defense number 84. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. There you go. PI. On the defense, Kai Torsvik. I think Pinfield. Ben might be saying that that was the reason that he dropped the ball. He got a, a, a pass interference oh, before I would be. the ball. Got no, no, no. <laughs> well, whatever it takes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> WA need to hold on. There's still plenty of time now, especially after that 15-yard penalty and a stop clock. We've said that there's plenty of time for, for quite a few plays now. Oh, even more goal cleats. Look at those at number 19 there. Wow. 
Brian Evans. Look at that. You want to have game if you've got those gold boots. Oh, you want to have geez. game, otherwise you, know, you just... You don't uh, want to be the guy rocking... Yeah, you don't want to be just all show with no go. Or all the gear and no idea. <laughs> I like that one. In motion is Brown. Will they throw to him? He's got time. Does he know he's getting chased? No, he doesn't. Ball's loose. It's recovered by Birch. Western Australia have held out, but there are multiple flags on the field. Could be holding. Once again, Michael being a lefty rolls to his left or trying to make room on his left. And number 80 came shot out of an absolute cannon, Connor McPhillan. Had a good opening game despite the losing score against Queensland. Holding oh, nice. on the offense, number 62. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is first down WA. Is that what you call it these days? 40. That's what they call it, and we just got the call from Kevin Chen there. It was holding on the offense. Naturally, they'll decline when the other option is getting the ball back. And Western Australia, they keep this two-score margin and give themselves an opportunity with one timeout and 49 seconds remaining to uh, try and close that gap. A lot of time, especially with the strength of the quarterback's arm, to get the ball downfield, he's, he's got the wideouts that can, that can get the job done. Now let's see if uh, the uh, the offensive line can uh, can uh, can uh, hold the defense out. I've got a feeling it's going to be going deep fairly quickly, if not on this play. Screen out wide. Lucky Pink, what can Lucky Pink do with the run after the catch? He can make a man miss, and he can get across the sideline, taking it into Wolverine, the Wolverine side of the field. Great work getting outside to stop the clock again. And an experienced trooper, Mr. Pink. Fight, 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 fight. Big effort from the defense to try and strip the ball out again. But once again, a turnovers is something that we'll talk about going into halftime being the difference in this game. Momentum killers. Yeah, we still think about the one that denied Western Australia a score. The intercept there by uh, number 31, I think it was. For New South Wales. Was it Harris Walker? Or it might have actually been Mitchell King. In the end zone. Mm. Illegal block in the back. Number 17 on the Illegal offense. The 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first teams down. Need to cut the penalties out. Exactly right. And the coach will be tearing his hair out. Um, Michael Kerr, the head coach, has already got silver white hair. I don't know if he can get it's any whiter than that. It's already silver. <laughs> exactly right. The old silver it. fox, yeah. We're in the commentary booth, mate. And <laughs> We're getting frustrated, but these teams just got to keep that discipline in check. Lucky pink. Will not be the recipient on this play. They'll go to, I think that's Degui. Oh, and another, no, another flag. flag. Awesome. We've had some long two minutes in our time. But... This is a long two minutes. And it's a little bit of a lack of discipline. We mentioned earlier that uh, just before half time, the, the concentration drops off a bit, so you get lazy. Uh, uh, mentally, get la lazy physically, and then you just do whatever you have to do to get to, to think getting the job done ends up being an Ill illegal play. Uh, some of these players might be in the halftime sheds already. Indeed, Kevin Chen with a call. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 17, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Connor Aldridge called for a face mask there of course resulting in 15 yards so Western Australia you get a boost and nothing play turns into something very very positive they're going to move those chains yes they will now first and 10 ball I think 34 44 44 one yard beyond halfway of course 90 yard fields 10 yards taken away from the middle of the field Westlake, can he draw his team closer? He well, we knew it was field, coming. Gave it a flick to Lockie Pink, intercepted, taken away. Making the play is Damon Rowland. Great play from Damon. 
I think they just tried to take a shot there. Despite the double coverage, he just took the shot. That's right, but didn't really give uh, his receiver Lockie Pink a chance. He just basically threw it down the middle of the field rather than leading him to the outside a little bit. I think Lock he, I just looked at that coverage there, and you see the way Damon Rowland there. He was close to the line of scrimmage. He made up a lot of speed yep, there. It looked exactly like single right. coverage. Great closing speed. Saw what the quarterback was up to and just, just uh, bailed out of there. Wheels on his feet. Yeah, a bit of a patent read, perhaps. He just saw that. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Saw that... Uh, his number two receiver was going vertical. Just realised, I'm going to forget everything. Let's get up there. I would have liked to see the Marcus throw the ball up a bit higher into the outside to give his receiver a chance. It just seemed like he just threw the ball up there and hoped. Lockie didn't really have a chance. Lockie Pink didn't really have a chance to get that. 30 seconds. Still time to do something. Depends on how conservative they want to go. That's a great angle. Have a look at it from there. It's incomplete. But that was a great little viewpoint for him. Thank you, like. camera guys. That looked wonderful. Max Heptonstall. I don't know what he was aiming for then. He certainly threw it behind one and too far behind the other blue receiver. And the best chance of the reception there was for the defense. Oh, look, they're going to treat us to this angle once more. Hepsenstall. Coaches love this angle. There you go. We'll go under centre here. Wouldn't be surprised if they just kneel this one out. And that will be the case. They took the ball away. They've got a two-score lead. And that should take us to the half. As a player, you're a little bit frustrated. But as a coach, you understand why he does that. Kevin Chen raised the ball above his head, and that will bring us to halftime after one of the longer three minutes closes to a half we've seen in some time. New South Wales, they have a nice lead over WA, 14 points to nil. I'm Kenny Andres, of course, joined by the company of Coach Milos Vichel, and we'll be back on the other side of halftime, back in 10 minutes. We need a new battery though.
All right, catching us just before kickoff. Welcome back to the final game of day two. New South Wales taking on the WA. New South Wales desperately trying to keep in touch with a chance to finish as first or second seed and compete for a national championship. As is WA, of course, points for and against. That will come into uh, effect effectively if the second seed team will be 2-1-1. and one. That will be largely decided off the Queensland-Victoria game tomorrow. But in the meantime, New South Wales, WA. Michael Kerr versus Glenn Bowes. Two Outback mates and co-coaches. Very good mates. Know each other very, very well. We've got our statisticians crunching the numbers of all the potentials in my ear as we speak. So. Right now, Victoria, who is sitting second on the ladder with four and against behind Queensland. They're currently plus 28 on four and against, whereas I think New South Wales on eight is what I'm hearing. So they're on 10, sorry. They are plus 10. And that run on first down was a strong one, but I've heard a chorus of oars as soon as it's ended. Flags down Usually as well. comes from the defense. And and we might have another fumble. Kai Rigersberg with a great run, followed by... He's not having a very fun afternoon, is Mr. Rogersberg. Two fumbles to his name now. Was this flag pre-fumble? Ball security is job security. We'll see uh, See if he stays out there eventually. What are they calling it? The ground caused the fumble, which it can't. Kevin Chen about to give us a call. Kevin Chen coming over to the camera sideline now. Great run, it was an initial great jump cut to get out of the way. Of the Before the change of possession, personal foul, face mask, defense number 24. That 15 yard penalty be assessed oh, wow. we go. from the previous spot. First down, New Free South card. Wales. Well, that's why I dropped it, coach. You ripped my face off. <laughs> so, a penalty before the loss of possession, meaning that Rijkersberg's, and I'll probably butcher that pronunciation, his face mask was yanked before he lost the ball. Therefore, that penalty is enforced before the act of losing the ball. New South Wales stay in possession. And in motion now. He's one of the New South Wales players and he gets it on the sweep, but that's a nice tackle behind the line of scrimmage by the, one of the defensive linemen, Adam Parker, for Western Australia. Max Hepstone stall as the starting quarterback for the second half. Re reverse pivot, hand off to the jet sweeping or orbit sweeping receiver from the right to the left. Number four, Corey Dean. And stuffed with outside penetration by the defense. That leaves, leaves him with a second and 15 scenario now. Hadn't seen that play before from Glenn Bowles, Big Bear head coach, so... A little wrinkle to try and give the defense a different look. And here's their OC as well, in charge of the play calling. Hips and Saul. Play action pass, looking for the slant. Can't connect, it's been intended for a Liam Brown. It was on. He may have had a, a hands and helmet in his face to uh, change the passing lane. Led... Uh, Liam Brown a little too far, who had a had a breaking step on his defender. There's some pink gloves. They're extremely pink. Look, ugh. Edwards rocking the fingerless. I really see a whole lot more of that. Look, the old fingerless glove, fingerless gloves. Uh, Lyman can do whatever they want to do. <laughs> Rifleman's gloves, they are. Still possession. Captain Saul. He's got Dean on the numbers towards your screen. And that one is blocked at the line of scrimmage. Tipped there 
by Big 55, Jake Sadgyan. Gary Big Hands Johnson from the old Cowboys days. Dikembe Matombo was I oh, like There you go, I used that earlier today, I love that. Mm. Come through untouched on the outside, Sadgyan. So that brings up a fourth down, couldn't convert after that huge loss on first. As a quarterback, you don't want to see a big number 55 come through, coming through unchecked. Chance to bury the, uh, the Raiders' offense deep in their own. Well, Rainey with a nice punt. I think they'll be marked inside the 20. How far is that official going to walk? We'll lose him on camera. And it looks like you're getting a battery pack change. top of the second after that first drive the Wolverines can't convert it into points the Western Australian Raiders now they'll get a chance to tighten the lead oh, sorry dig into the deficit I should say rather than tighten the lead that doesn't make sense a lot of field to cover to get down there to score unless it's uh, big chunk plays or one big one could, that could turn the tide. Screenplay out wide. Lucky Pink, they're getting him involved. The groin must be fine because he's racking up the catches, but by that one down the right-hand side line early in the first half, look, he may be getting the catches, but they're not letting him run for a whole lot. Well, it's absolutely key on those wide screens for the other receivers to get downfield blocks. And number 17 coming through there, pretty much unchecked, Connor Aldridge. Great play by him to fight through the block to get there. If those blocks on the perimeter aren't made, nothing, nothing will happen. There's a perfect example of that right there. Another guy who hasn't had a whole lot of attention, but I just feel like he could be a bit of a matchup problem for the Raiders is Bailey Beckingham. Now he's moved to the right-hand side. Just look at the height advantage he has over Mulvaney there. He's a big lump of a lad. Well, they go short straight into a defender. And getting up frustrated is Fletcher Dignam. Connor Aldridge again. Is there more than one number 17 out on the field? Because he's on the <laughs> left side, now he's on the right side. He's wherever he wants to be. No, that one. Oh, 17 was there, but who was that number 20, was it? Yes, that it actually was made the play. Blake Morgan, Morgan Monk. Monk, another one of the uh, Blake Morgan Monk law firm. <laughs> Westlake throwing right a fair bit of touch underneath it looking for Pink had a, thought he had enough touch to get over the top of the defender and Harris, Harris Walker, Walker but it goes astray and Walker probably was hoping he could have done a better job tracking that football yeah once again, I would have liked to have seen the quarterback throw to the outside more and give Lockie Pink more of a, a chance to go fetch it. It gave too much of a chance for the defense to, to, to cover that pass, uh, being thrown more towards the middle of the field. Certainly is a game of field position at the moment. Charge uh, team timeout. WA. The that is the their Raiders first in their own, for the half. Uh, end of the field. And now it's up to the Raiders to, uh, to do something. If they don't do something, it'll be a punt. And then a chance for the Wolverines to get the ball somewhere around the middle of the field, if not better. It's a timeout called out from WA. Coach, I'm going to get things back lively. You've obviously been on a lot of these tours. You've coached on uh, week-long tours like this, you've done flyer flight experience, you've gone to Mexico, you've gone to various different places to coach. Give us a story. Uh, oh, now you put me on the spot. You didn't prepare me for this. Did not. Improv um, 101. If not, uh, make, make a video. <laughs> uh, the growth that you see that the players from the start of the very first camp to the end of the campaign, uh, they really do go from uh, boys to men. Uh, I work with receivers predominantly and to see the young lads develop 
uh, as as uh, as not just football players but human beings is, is, is probably the fam fa my favourite part of the job. I always say that uh, my job is not to churn out better football players, it's to churn out better human beings through the vehicle of football, and I just love seeing that develop. I really do love seeing them turn uh, turn into to young, well-adjusted men. Wrapped up right as the cadence begins. Nicely done, coach. And is this a fake? It very well could be. That's Beckingham, but he turns it into a punt. Whilst it looks big, that whistle was blown early. Couldn't have travelled too far before going out of bounds. You certainly did uh, cock the ball that looked to look like a pass. Uh, deep in your own uh, end of the field. I don't know if we read that right, but it certainly did look like a, a pass option, which if, if it worked, great. But if not, that could have been very, very ugly. Yeah. I think they may have dodged the bullet there. I think those roles, and look, I know Chappie's designed it and I know a lot of teams adopt it now. I think you should probably take away as, as far as they can run. I'd like to see those punts go a bit early because right now they're losing so much yardage because they're kicking it pretty much outside the numbers. Mm. Well, the WA team in particular like to pride themselves on having AFL players to, to kick the ball that, uh, that are used to making decisions very, very quickly, uh, run or punt. But that was very, very late. Yes. Not Streeter, wow. but Hawkins. Number 24, Nafareem Smith getting in there. Knifing through once again. He was doing similar things in 2017. He was learning off a one Mitch Kavanagh. And this time, he's the guy making those plays. From Mitch's old club, the wow. Perth Blitz. Mitch Kavanagh, there's a name from the blast from the past. Still rocked a mullet back in 2017. No one can rock a mullet better than Mitch Kavanagh. <laughs> well. <laughs> I don't know, there's some pretty, mullet, pretty solid mullets out there nowadays, it particularly the NRL. Yeah. It's coming back, apparently. <laughs> Moustaches and, and mullets. Love it, love it. I'm mean, a child <laughs> of the 70s, uh, I can really appreciate that. <laughs> Hepton Stall is under pressure, and he's going to be picking up turf out of his face mask after that one. I think that is going to be Ashley Raven getting in again. If checked out, it could actually be Jake Sedyan. 55, Jake Sedyan came in. I, I, I don't know if I saw that right, but he seemed to lead with his helmet a little bit late. I might be uh, trying to protect the quarterback here, but let's see. Sedyan comes in. Oh, right late of now. Well, it's the wrong guy in the first place of credit. It's Naf Smith again, back-to-back -back players. And I think you might be right with that little cheeky shot at the end. It's one thing to be playing to the echo of the whistle. But don't lead with your helmet. Yeah, that was just uh, pure aggression there. Couldn't, couldn't help himself. Uh, not picked up by the referees, so it would have been a borderline situation. Well, there we go. I thought it was third and 55 in a second. I'm like... I love a nice exaggeration. Probably not that much, though. Delay of game on the offense. Accurate. Number 11, five-yard penalty. Throw in a delay Repeat of game to so make that third and 30. Choices for the OC uh, Glenn Bowes to make right now. Does he go for it or does he uh, be conservative and then punt again to bury the Raiders back in their own, close to their own end zone? You try to find somewhere in the middle, somewhere that has a, it's a, you know, maybe a five to fifteen yard pass that has some run out of the catch built into it. You'd like to see some yak right now, wouldn't you? Hepton Stall like with protection, answer. throws off his back foot, looking for Chariot, and Chariot might have got himself another pi. Chariot, a slot receiver, at outback level, had a bit of a struggle. To the finish of his first half. Oh. One was there there before the ball got there? One of them was Zane Grigorovic. Crossing route from Ben Chariot from the left to the right side. Very close, but the flags did fly. Let's see what... Kevin Smith. Kevin Chen, sorry. Pass interference. Defense, number 11. Spot foul. Automatic first down. Defense. As we expected. So that will, well, stuff the third and 30. That's an automatic first. Well, that's uh, that's how you draw it up. Get a PI, automatic first down, keep the ball. What do you make about automatic first on, 
and POs. Uh, obviously, I'm a receivers coach, so of course I'm going to say, <laughs> yeah, great. Um, I think if it's beyond the actual thing, yeah, sure. Mm, but if it's underneath, ooh, I don't yeah. know. I yeah. think it's a bit, bit rich. If I was to be neutral, I, I, I don't see it deserves an actual first down in that situation. Yeah, I did sure, but a bit rich. That's Ooh, a bad snap, and Heppenstall ain't messing around. I think a lot of the quarterbacks here are on day two. No one's trying to force anything. They're just cut falling their losses up. and falling on it. There's Hawkins in there I'm with him. And you just don't know what could have happened on that play. Receivers working hard downfield. It certainly looked like it was going to be a pass play. Unfortunate that the center, center quarterback exchange was just not on. Great for the defense, of course. Second and 20. Certainly digging themselves in holes. We had third and 30 uh, just earlier, now second and 20. So they're not exactly going forward. Yeah, they might not get a PI to bail them out out of this one. Here goes that Hawkins. Indeed it is. That's a solid run to get back some of that yardage. It'll make, make it a more of a reasonable third down, but it's crazy I'm saying that about a third and ten. We had uh, jet motion from the left to right to try and spread the defense a little bit wider, create a gap in the middle, and there it is. I've got to say, the uh, Wolverines uniform this year is looking schmeck. Absolutely. Third and 13. Oh, no, check that. Third and nine. Nine. Captain Stall looking comfortable. We'll throw to Chariot. They'll try to make this with some yak. Oh, a shot there by Naf Smith. We'll get up from that. He gets up quickly, but geez, it was a nice one. He came downhill, didn't he? Loaded the wagon on that play. Loaded the wagon and just, uh, and a bang. Whoosh. Actually, was it quite possibly Sad more of Sedyan hitting him through? <laughs> did, not, did not slow down, yeah, did he, when he went after Smith. contact? It's one thing to get a big pass or a, or, or a big uh, a run play, but nothing fires up a sideline like a big hit from defense. Boom. <laughs> Twenty-four Nafarim Smith together with Sadian with a with a with a crunching play. And one more time. Oh, there's something going on. This is actually nope. I think that was the replay. There is live action going on. We missed it. It's a catch. Or some sort of play. We'll take a look at it again and replay. Could be number, number seven, is that Luke? Oh, I don't know. It looked like a yellow hat making a play. Let's take a look. This is the play that this is the play we just missed. Number seven making a play. Yeah. Lucas Jeff. Little hook route, easy pitch and catch. You like to uh, you like to be that on a play like that. You like to be as comfortable as if the quarterback just came and handed him the ball. I think Lucas Jeff is another one who's thrown to the mix. I think one of the biggest things about uh, the tournament this year, and I'll hold my thoughts till after this play, Herptonstall. He's got rats all across the field. A man open over the middle. It's Liam Brown. We said he needs to get involved. You did say there that. he is, getting his second touchdown of the tournament. That was very, very open. I don't know if the quarterback uh, uh, sold the outside with his eyes to open up the inside. Nope. Defense just opened up very, very wide there. And left, him, left him one on one with a free safety who was completely uh, flat footed and out of position. Good concept. Nicely done. Chariot's back to try and slot it over to make it 21 nil. And it is up and good. 21 points to nil now in favour of the New South Wales Wolverines after a beautiful touchdown there to Liam Brown. But talk us through this again, coach. It looks like they, were, they, they, they blitzed through the middle, leaving the middle wide open, so the, the free safety was there on an island by himself to cover. You can see them still <laughs> celebrating on this sideline. Oh, they've been practicing that. 
<laughs> so it looked like with a blitz, uh, the offensive line was out, were able to pick up the extra men coming through, leaving the middle wide open. Uh, and once again, the free safety left flat-footed and uh, out of position to try and make the tackle, which he obviously couldn't. Great play. Um, if that was, if that's what the OC Big Bear was able to see that they were going to blitz, and then take advantage of that, then uh, well done. Well, let's let's put it down to that. And to finish off my thoughts about a second ago, you know, usually once upon a time there was only maybe one or two guys on a team that could properly really catch the football. The other guys there, let's face it, kind of make up the numbers. And I'm talking about all the way through our junior football here. Nowadays, there every team seems to have a platoon of guys yeah. who can catch. Obviously, there are standouts among each team. You look at Sam Young. Yep. You look at uh, in Queensland. Uh, you got a uh, Pelyadan. Uh, Lockie Pink and, and WA, but there's a bunch of guys, so much so that, oh, a little hurdle there by Lockie Pink, speak of the devil, taking it back to the 30. But you got a whole bunch of guys who, uh, you know, so much that you, you end up calling guys intermittently throughout games because That's they're right. spreading the ball around so much. That's right. The quarterback will have his favourites and his eyes will go when he's in trouble. He will go to his guy, so to speak. Uh, but across the, the depth across, uh, across uh, each of the teams is, is getting deeper and deeper. The players are getting younger and younger, catching the ball. But once again, it's 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 one thing to be able to just purely catch a ball, but then it's completely different to be able to catch it in traffic while you're moving with a helmet and shoulder pads on. That that takes a little while to develop. Obviously, there's naturals, but to, to, to get the depth, it takes a little while to develop. This time, a run play for the WA Raiders. We mentioned earlier that uh, it's one thing to overcome a, a two-touchdown deficit. Uh, three touchdown deficit, uh, a different kettle of fish. They need to score quickly. Do you agree? Again. And you can still see the uh, runners running around the track here at the Sydney Academy of Sport and Recreation. There's some amazing athletes running running laps and doing their practice. We mentioned that earlier to, to a few of the players. There's some amazing athletes. And this is another throw out to the uh, the left flat and we're seeing a player down on New South Wales this Dignam again recording a catch Fletcher Dignam making the first guy miss number 17 who had his foot caught in the ground there it gets up a bit wobbly uh, but gr once again a great swarming defense to, to go and smother uh, the receiver after that from the Wolverines. Uh, you love to see that as a defensive coordinator that uh, they flow to the ball and just swarm like bees and then just sting. What's like catching, pitch and catch. Long, trying to find Dignam again. Sails over the head of everybody. Coverage in the play. Right there from uh, Connor Aldrich. Lights coming on here at Narrabeen as we close out the game. It's getting cool out there as well. It is. I think we've both chucked the jackets on. Absolutely. Uh, for the players that have been on the sideline for a little while, though, it will start to stiffen up and getting back on the field, they might be a half step slower. Could make a difference. I think it's probably important for the players and the coaches to have to watch out for the players who do stay cold for a little bit of it and mm. running on there, possible mm. cramp issues. Absolutely. And uh, especially when I was working with my receivers, I always want to keep them moving, not standing still on the sideline. And that will be down there, the special teams unit. Could have let that roll a little bit more. <laughs> Maybe a little more Ryan Evans, but his gold boots told him otherwise. <laughs> He's got game. <laughs> yeah. He's going to find a way to get himself noticed. 157. Remaining in the third. We've still got a fourth quarter. Quick third loose. quarter. So half times today have been shortened to 12 minute half times opposed to usual 20s as an endeavour to try and get this final game pushed through a little bit earlier for a lot of the viewers. And also, it does get dark here, and these lights, while wonderful, are a little further out because of the track. So. Trying to keep it fair for all the players who play in daylight and night. Cameron St Streeter comes in, skates. 
Michael Ryan in for Max Hepson, Saul at uh, quarterback. Skeets gets the ball. No, oh, no. Ryan will keep it. Ryan will Zone read. juke. He'll find some space up the left-hand sideline. He'll take it past halfway, I believe. Quarterback has the option of giving the ball or keeping them. If the, if the defense crashes down on the running back, he'll keep it. And vice versa. In that case there, the defense did crash down on the running back. Michael Ryan keeps the ball. gets a very, very good gain. As a quarterback, you love that. It's a simple concept, but it's a staple of this game, of the modern game at least. Yep. You see a lot of that. And if, uh, when successful, when, 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 when run well, it really puts the defensive to mind, especially those charging defensive edge rushes. We've got a bit more vision in the field. I might even use the field here. He goes straighter, straighter. Going lateral and being wrestled to the ground. Things getting on maybe a little bit testy as this game A little bit chippy out there now, a little bit chippy. Michael Kerr, my interview with him this week, he said that it would it would be a uh, it would definitely f be filled with emotion. Yeah, once again, it's a young, relatively inexperienced team um, that uh, need to keep their heads on, uh, need to keep their emotions in check, and just keep executing play after play and not get caught up in any any kind of other nonsense. Cheap penalties are just silly at this point of the game. Four down linemen for Western Australia. And reading the run are they, and that's Streeter getting forward again. It just them a little bit closer. Makes that third down just that little bit easier. What's fascinating, though, again, leading up to the tournament, Michael Kerr told me that this defense is going to be a little undersized. It's changed. They're running more of a zone defense game. It's going to be schematic. You're not going to see them just try to man up and try to blitz the other team out of a victory because they just don't have that individual talent they've had in the past. They had to win defensively as a team, and you can certainly see that on display. Uh Everything works in cycles, and where they had for a while there, they had a, a, a bunch of horses that could get the job done, especially the linebacker and strong safety position. And they were just headhunters, and they could, could send people and get the job done as far as blitzing goes. Uh, with these young guys, they'll, they'll need to get more experience, they'll need to get some size, some speed, uh, get used to the speed of the 11 man game, uh, uh, and then possibly the next tournament has the experience where they really get to shine here it's a lot of times it's just getting rid of that uh deer in headlights kind of uh kind of set as a uh, maybe i'm getting a bit too retrospective a bit too early in the tournament here but let's talk about the growth of the tournament it, as i mentioned it properly started as the tournament we know back in 2004 there were a couple of exhibitions between representative teams if you will before that 2002 2001 i believe um but 2004 is a competition we know it and from there, we started as a seven-man comp, grew to a nine-man comp, and in less than 20 years, running full 11-man at the state level. So it's trending in a good trajectory. Yeah, and uh, obviously coaches need to develop. Uh, if you build it, they will come. If you have a good go coaching staff, players will gravitate towards that. And then coaches need to hang around for a while so, so they develop with the programs that, that, uh, that, they're, that they're trying to work with. Ryan. Patiently waiting, but he's under pressure now. Running out around a few of them. Now just throws it to get rid of it, and he's found a receiver, and he'll be taken down, but not after grabbing a good chunk of yardage. Picking that catch up. Is that Connor Aldridge, number 17? Oh, Did I get that right? Teen number. I thought it was 15, but there's no 15 on the roster. It's 19. It's more. 19. Connor Moore. I'm aware. Oh. No Great one. job by Moore uh, working for his quarterback. Uh, never gave up. He could, he could have uh, uh, switched off and let his quarterback just run out of bounds. But kept working, kept working to the open space, found some green grass. All of a sudden, first down, giddy up, off we go. Great job by uh, Mike Ryan, the quarterback uh, lefty. Uh, creating room, creating time uh, to, to, to get that play working. Ryan will hand off. Back on the field is uh, Raj Gisberg. As we're dealing with the natural mozzies here on the northern beach, and as the lights get low. Mm. Once again, the big the big dogs will be loving this cooler weather. Yes, sir. You got to be brave to go up the middle. I don't care who you are, how strong you are. You got to be brave to take a ball and, and, and run up the guts like that. Yeah, some of the biggest hit, biggest hitters are lurking. Second and eight. Got a more 
motion. Hit him on the flat. No, he wants to go over the middle for an open man. Can he scooch over into the end zone? Yes, he can. Liam Brown again. He's becoming a real goal line monster, a red zone monster. I think uh, it was as soon as you said that we need to see Liam Brown a little bit more that he started uh, uh, really shining here. And he certainly has ripped open that middle a couple of times now. Similar to the play that we saw before, this time with a motion from left to right, jet sweep, spreading the defense, leaving the middle wide open. Possibly another, I'll, I'll need to see it again, but I think they blitzed again. Wide open, the free safety not able to fight the ball and make the play. Relatively easy play for the quarterback pitch and catch to Liam Brown. It's a bad snap. What are they going to do to improvise? Oh. They throw it out. He goes, Chariot, Chariot, has he got some pace to get around the corner? No, he does not. That is unsuccessful. The score remains 27 points to nil. The Wolverines are now staring down the barrel of a potential shutout. Good heads up play there, though. Man number 21 in uh, Eric Minicelli. Mm. You were talking earlier about uh, the for and against and how it could start to play a key factor in uh, the seedings and the, the progression of the tournament. 27 points is very, very good for the Wolverines, obviously, uh, especially when it comes down to maybe tiebreakers or this and that moving down. Well, they're getting better now. Deeper into the tournament. I think they're plus 23 if my count's correct. Negative four after that first game. Oh, you're better than me. You're, so, uh, you're sharper than me when it comes to numbers. Of course, they'll, uh, because of their loss to Victoria, they'll need to rack up a good one to try and keep pace with Queensland. Assuming the best outcome for them that happens, which is Victoria beats Queensland tomorrow. And, and, we, as, uh, and on Thursday, as we know, anything can happen. It's and whoever shows up on the day. Exactly right. And start to get crazy. This is where people start bringing out the uh, the calculators. We've got a day off tomorrow, so mm. to be sure all the coaches are working out every scenario. Mm. And a bob will kick off, and that will end the return, of course. For anyone who doesn't know, you do not need to be touched to be tackled. Any If any part of your body, other than the, sole, uh, the palms of your hands and the sole of your feet touch the ground, you are constituted as tackled. Like right that, tackled. Uh, with the getting a bit darker, maybe some dew or moisture getting on the ball, making it a bit greasier. But the the receiver then, or the returner, certainly took his eyes off the ball just before it, the catch. Uh, in the lights. Leading to that uh, drop and a frustrating fumble for the head coach. Would have liked a bit more room to work with for his offense. There's a long way to march downfield to score. In motion now, they'll give it to the motion man. Going on field, I think that's uh, I thought that was Bailey Beckingham. You see on these uh, jet sweeps, they try to get to the outside, and once that outside is taken away, they cut back inside, and then it's just trouble. There's just a lot of blue jerseys there waiting to uh, uh, to smother him. Right down. Let's try and get our uh, one would need a pin. Here's our day one results. As we try to do some maths for you. And so Queensland's positive at 27 on uh, that Day one. And then we're just trying to do some maths for you guys quickly while this rigid player gets looked after. And then Just crunching the numbers here between the 
likely teams, or I wouldn't say likely, but the ones we're concerned about at the moment, but Queensland are well ahead. So crunch some numbers. And as I do with the voices in my head, 62 for Queensland. So Queensland's at 62, New South Wales as it stands right now at 23, Victoria at 28. So the margin is close, however, bad news for New South Wales is they do not, uh, Victoria has the head-to-head -head on them. So New South Wales between this game and the next game would need to try and make up a 62 point, uh, sorry, a oh, 62 minus 23. And that's why I'm working it out for Queensland. As I argue with the voices with my head. I'm I'm sure the viewers are gonna think I'm incredibly crazy right now. You are. <laughs> As we see the player work off. Let's focus on what's on the screen though right now. Senric Haycock. A large unit. Obviously in a bit of distress here. You never want to see that. Yeah, well, we saw that, and look at that, that's Kyle Reynolds there from the All-Stars going out and lending a hand to the WA side. He actually got to know Michael Kerr when Michael Kerr spent some time in Queensland, the North Queensland for work. He helped out with the, uh, the programs down there, so but bad news for the big man going down. We do wish him a speedy recovery. Absolutely. Once we return to play. You'll see number 52 there, Luca Brundu. That's a famous number in uh, New South Wales gridiron. His dad, Andrew Brundu, has been around since 1984. Deep roots in the When they played with uh, hockey helmets and, uh, and uh, sofa padding on their shoulders. <laughs> uh, now head coach, and I think maybe even president, no, I think head, head coach of the New University of New South Wales Raiders. Turned the program around, been very successful. So it's a famous number, number 52. Yeah, it's almost just a famous football number, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, yep. A lot of yep. Big names, Ray Lewis, I think uh, former 49ers, yep. middle and linebacker. Doing his dad proud to doing a great job uh, plugging up the middle. There he goes again. They get this ball away quickly to Zane Grigorovich. Look at him go. He takes it up near the 40. Torrent under his OC is uh, fired up after that. They want to get on the scoreboard. And there, look at all the, the, you see the left tackle, Samuel Allison getting in there amongst the rest of the guys. Oh, you love to see big, big dogs running downhill. The big, big number 73 guy and just clearing a path for him. And again, Luke Chapman tuning in with his input there. Of course, we're doing maths on the floor there, so don't take anything I say as of right now as accuracy. Of course, we've got to... Uh, the 35 point margin and I think that's where coach Chapman is coming actually yeah same play the other side well read by the defense late flags more of these flags floating in we saw how long it took to close out the first half when these flags started flying we've still got over nine minutes remaining in this game we'll have to see who that's on but it, it, it's it's chippy once again and from the new south wales standpoint there's absolutely no need to get chippy at all here just keep your heads on and fortunately we won't be getting any calls from kevin shen anymore as battery pack has run out Mm. In the field, so we'll try to communicate the best we can from what we see. Personal foul against someone on the blue, Wolverines team, and uh, once again, absolutely no need for that with this strong lead. You don't even want to give the Raiders a sniff. And with the for and against being uh, so important. <laughs> Leading into the uh, the tail end of the tournament, uh, you don't want to give uh, opportunity for the Raiders to score here. Just get out there and execute. And just found that there. It's 
a unnecessary roughness call on number 21. He goes at Westlake once again. Quick throw over the middle. Hitting his man, Jacques Flozard. And there's another example of him talking about as we see more flags get thrown in. Or, uh, another name that's been called in. They've even more guys you can be throwing to. Mm. I'm called Jock Flazar's name. The man. talent's there. The talent's there. The quarterback's uh, as young as he is, seems to have locked onto the primary receiver and doesn't go th through his progressions. So if you are the first receiver that the quarterback sees, uh, you're usually the one that gets the ball in that place is Jacques Flozar uh, with a nice route followed by a, a strong ball security. Coach, we'll uh, probably speak a little more freely now, but last time in uh, your last tour with the Outback, of course, in Mexico, wonderful culture over there. What was it like seeing uh, the football culture in Mexico? Yeah, well, w when you realize that there's more people in Mexico City than there is in all of Australia, it really is a, <laughs> an eye-opener. Um, Pretty dense, huh? Very, very dense. Uh, we got to see uh, some of the historical sites in, in Mexico, and that was absolutely wonderful because it's hundreds and hundreds of years old. Um, uh, the people were very, very friendly to us. Um, we got to uh, experience the Mexico Olympic Stadium, the site of the 1966 Olympics. So uh, lots of history just walking out of the field. There's, uh, the ground speaks to you. The, the stadium speaks to you of, of, of stories. Uh, of, uh, of past heroes and champions. So the players got to really experience uh, something very, very special. So a host of penalties be called against Western Australia there. One was a chop block. Another one I think was an unnecessary roughness. The players are getting a talking to now. They're explaining the calls. to get his audio one more time. As soon as he decides hmm. where he wants to stand, I think he's picking up his... Dropped you. his bundle. In any case, he... Uh, Looks like the Raiders have been marched about maybe 30 yards. Mm. And that was uh, following a personal foul, at least a 15-yarder against the Wolverines. So it's back and forth, uh, late fouls or silliness, whatever you want to call it, just uh, unfortunate. It slows the game down. It's, fr it's frustrating for everyone involved. Especially those who want to get on to dinner. Westlake. Westlake throwing, almost intercepted over the top. Coverage on the play there by number 20, Blake Morgan Monk. You see Coach Hollywood Road grabbing a seat on the sideline there. <laughs> again quick dump out pass they're just trying to work the quick game now but New South Wales Wolverines still alert to it that man's still having a good afternoon Joseph Alataraka Wolverines are really firing off the ball there uh, seem to be a, a, a step quicker than the defense uh, than the offensive line of uh, the, the Raiders right now well, they're trying to get this almost like a mini screen out there by pulling the left tackle, if you can call it a pull. Yeah, they've, they've tried that a couple of times. It was a successful once uh, for a good gainer, but um, uh, you miss a block and things can go very, very bad very, very quickly on, on short screens. Yeah, you're off, you're on. Yeah. 
Am I reading that right? Third and 45. Looks about right. Westlake incomplete, attempted over the middle. Pass intended for the uh, Western Joy slot. Jerry Venturis. Now, for a young, inexperienced squad like the Raiders, it's. Um It'll be very easy to start switching off now to have a look up at the scoreboard and just uh, start thinking about dinner after the game. It's up to the coaches now to, st to, to keep them focused, to keep executing. Uh, you don't want to say playing for pride uh, because that almost uh, uh, belittles uh, uh, what they have to do. The chances to return, yeah. But uh, you do need to keep playing as a football player, as a team, as a squad. There, there, there's still lessons to be learned here. You know the 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 Wolverines' defense is still going to be firing out uh, like they shot out of cannons. Well, with the Wolverines needing to give themselves the best chance by creating the best PD available, you know they're not going to let up. Punt situation here. Punt is up, and the punt is collected after a couple of bounces. That is uh, returning it and now getting tackled. Another flying flag. Then Roland, and we'll see another discussion. And I'm going to go to you, Coach, for another football anecdote. Best football memory, mate. Let's go as a player. As a player, it was, uh, I was a receiver, and the best football memory I have was actually a peel-back block where <laughs> I actually hit a guy that was twice as big as me, and then I stood over him. On the film, I stood over him and looked like a real hero, but um, uh, a, a block rather than a catch or, or anything else was my favourite memory because it sprung a, a, a touchdown from my running back. There you go, selfless as it is. That almost that ball was almost fumbled there yeah, by was. Roland. Yeah. Playing at a junior college in Mississippi, though, that was the toughest thing that I've ever, ever experienced. Um, that was that was hard. That was very very hard. And, uh, back in the eighties, you, you you'd probably imagine that uh, there was no concussion protocol or anything like that. Just to get you rub some dirt on your helmet and get back out there, even if your your eyes are spinning in your helmet. Yeah, I'd be glad that's uh, that culture has come to a close, or at least is coming to a close. And this you, is still, you still see old school coaches, but um, thankfully, it's it's uh, you want to protect your players. Nola Wabau, grabbing it, Curry. Yeah, no, we were uh, getting, I was having a, a good chat with, uh, after my interview with Bill Lamonnier, the mm. I, head of IFAF officiating, mm -hmm. obviously ESPN rules analyst as well, and he said obviously the big point of rule changes is all stuff to do with the head and concussions and stuff right now, and he was telling me about the different sort of interpretations he's get. He, he's run one at the, uni the North, uh, University of Northwestern, mm. and obviously one of the examples is someone completely getting their bell rung after a someone leading with a helmet and he has his team hooting and hollering after that and then and we'll wait for the next play to proceed and here it's Nolo Wobau taking the carry forward doing a good job reading blocks pushing forward losing a towel but getting the ball to the 50 inside zone that's all offensive line there and obviously number three Nolo Wobau Nolo Wobau with heart and soul to, to get further, but uh, you can see the big dogs there uh, uh, picking him up and patting him on the butt for uh, for good that, that, for a good run. They, they they love that. The big dogs love that. Not many sports we can call someone a big dog, and it's a it's a it's a source of pride. Mm -hmm. As we see, a man in motion is Mulvaney. And now it's a give to Hawkins. Hawkins looking for the block of Mulvaney. Gets to the outside. Picks up maybe a yard. But yeah, the, um, they'd speak about it. And uh, the guys at Northwestern, the head coach, whose name escapes me at the moment, famous Northwestern head coach, he goes, can I say something, coach? And he, uh, Sir, Bill. And Bill was uh, obviously hosting the the event. And he goes, it's your meeting, mate. Go for it. And he, he told his players, like, guys we're here to look after your safety now after this i want you guys to have serious questions here for him and talking about what you can and can't do etc etc and then conversely um bill lamania went to a, another school not too long after where the coach just said hey no this, this is a game for football you know 
let him do what you got to do. And it was amazing the difference in targeting penalties by the end of the season. Northwestern, I think, had one. This other unmentioned other school had over 10, I think. So oh. here we go, Shariot. Oh. He's got this one. Over the top it goes. And Ben Shariot had a couple drops, but he's brought himself back for his second touchdown of this game, pushing them over 30 points. I think Ben really needed that for his uh, personal confidence. He really is a player, uh, he's a perfectionist. Uh, he hates to make mistakes and he would really, really love this. Obviously it's just a, tu it's, it's a touchdown and any receiver loves it, but after the, the couple of drops from earlier, and a lovely ball thrown to the outside shoulder from uh, lefty Mike Ryan. Uh, still some work to do from Ben Sherrod on the outside, separation from the defensive back. Getting past. Great stuff. I remember, uh, well, I'm missing now. I thought it might have been Carl Joseph, but I think it actually might have been 38. For me personally, there's nothing prettier than in any sport than a, than a long pass from a quarterback to a receiver. I think you might uh, be right. Sherry converting his own touchdown. That he does. And you can see the, the big hogs coming off after a job well done. There's obviously beauty in all sports, uh, but for, uh, on a completely personal level, there's nothing be more beautiful than, uh, than a, uh, the long pass because I know that the, the offensive line has to block. The quarterback has to have his mechanics right. Uh, the, the offensive coordinator has to call the right play at the right time. The receiver has to have, obviously has to do what he has to do. So there's so many things have to, be, uh, have to uh, fall into place, have to be done right, have to be executed uh, correctly for that to be successful like that. So. On a personal level, there is nothing more beautiful for me in sport than a long ball for a catch. Yeah, I think you're onto something there, Coach. That kind of woke us up there. We're it did. It was, it was a, there was a bit of a lull in the game there, and then that, that fired the sideline up. It got, uh, it got the crowd uh, back into the game, um, and hopefully it wasn't a nail in the emotional coffin of the Raiders. Hopefully they're still here to play for, uh, for these five and a half minutes. Once again, up to the coaching staff to keep them fired up, to keep them focused, to keep them executing. And you know the Wolverines are going to be fired up now. Dan Grigorovich returning that one. Great camera work. in Australia now. Well, look, when all seemed lost against Queensland, they managed to bring themselves closer and get on the scoreboard. Of course, that was your Alex Endel. Mm. Which man is going to be the hero for them this time to rid themselves of the goose egg? You know what, though? Obviously, New South Wales want to get, get as many points uh, as, as possible for the point points for and against. But as a neutral, uh, you, don't, you, you don't like to really see a complete one-sided blowout. There's another carry. Is that Grigorovich again, perhaps? Good inside zone run with good blocking from the big dogs yep. up front, creating a little lane for him. Zay De La Franca. Well, keeping this in mind, New South Wales, as far as points four, they're one point away from the maximum. 35 points is the maximum points you can get credit for on competition. Four points. What's probably more important to them is that they do try to keep WA off the scoreboard. Mm. So WA is going to have to work for it. Absolutely. And... Uh, uh, knowing uh, Glenn Bowes, he will be telling his lads that uh, they need the goose egg, uh, to, well, to keep WA at uh, at the zero to, to help them in, uh, down the track in the tail end of the tournament. So the defense knows what they have to do. A quick fade, nicely wow. brought in. It's about time we've called uh, Flauzat's name uh, on a on a rather spectacular catch. He's a great athlete. He took a, a simple hook, ca uh, hook, r hook route catch earlier, and that time worked against the double team. And uh, long arms went out bravely, extended himself, leaving your ribs wide open. Great confidence builder for the young man. As we bring it back on first down again. A 
And that's a fly almost mm. into the hands of the New South Wales safety and Connor Aldridge. If you watch the quarterback, he's, uh, he gets all real... Well, actually, he did get a, ch a chance to step into it. I, I thought he kind of threw it off his back foot a bit. That wasn't too bad. Still, he looked, locked onto one receiver and was only going to go there. Looks left, throws left. Made it rather easy for that... Uh, what looked like a cover two safety to get across there. Yeah, I think as soon as he sees that safety... I mean, look, to his credit, he's trying to hold the safety. He saw him look middle first, trying to hold he the did safety. For, he did for a moment, but he was never going to throw anywhere yeah. but left. Safety just floated out. Corner's dropping away. Underneath, pass is arm. caught by Pink. Pink trying to avoid the tackle. The lines, linebacker underneath. But we're taking him down as Zach Fernley. Those two outback players going one, uh, going against each other right there. I was respected firmly, but I think that's really, the Sydney Uni Lions helmet. That's, uh, it's he's a Sydney Uni Lions, but he's also uh, yes, he is. He's also an outback player. Oh, is that right? There you go, choosing to wear his Lions helmet, huh? Mm. Once again, you don't get an, uh, an opportunity to wear your outback helmet too often. That's why you'll see the lads that do have their gold hats. That they will wear their gold hats. That's why I'm surprised that he's he's wearing his Lions. Not his yeah, it might be a bit of club pride there over national pride. Might have another player. It's Della Franca down after another muffed exchange. That was that all looked very very awkward. Looked like a helmet or a shoulder pads in the lower back. And that hurts. That really does, especially because you're uh, you can't defend yourself. You're just trying to get to the ball, and there's bodies flying everywhere. And for the most part, there's no pads there. No. You can get back plates, but usually it's quarterbacks. Maybe occasionally running backs using them. Snap was off target and then everything collapsed after that. Yeah, I think you're exactly yeah. right, that helmet. Yeah, right in that exposed lower back kidney kind of area. More even a hip pointer, which is just awful. Yeah, but, uh, it was a more, looked more like lower back than hip. That's one of the players there have that have ripped a hole in the side of their pants there. Give me my bubble. Like a badge of pride though. Yeah, you don't want to be the guy with the cleanest jersey. <laughs> he did it himself. Hey, you want some good one? Hit me up. <laughs> number, number nine, Isaiah De La Franca. Really didn't have a chance to do anything but try and uh, cover and secure the ball. And uh, great to see him get back up after a lower back shot like that. Yeah, you can see him holding it there. You can't really blame the defense on that either because I think they were scrambling for the ball as well and just yeah, the, helmet, the helmet got in the way. Yeah, it's just hustle and spot of the game, yep, unfortunately. Yep, yep, Nothing malicious in that. Like now with Grigorovic by his side, he'll throw out to Lockie Pick. Lockie Pick still competing, trying to break a tackle. He's wrestling with the New South Wales defenseman. That's Damon Rowland. And Co. A lot of blue jerseys swarming there. Number five gets in there first. 17 has a swing. 54 has a swing. Six. 87 hustling in. Lucky Pink, he's back to back campaigns, outback player, he's a leader on this team. He needs to he needs to be the one setting the example. Yeah, and uh, he's got an engine that never quits. Uh, he will go to the very, very last whistle and beyond probably. Pink again. A lot of pride in what in everything he does. I was quite proud to be his uh, positional coach in the uh, national team. Well, he's still going. Gets the better of Fernley that time. Not you wouldn't think place. you wouldn't have picked that he had a, a, a groin injury or a little groin uh, something something uh, leading into this game because uh, he's really shone uh, with every opportunity that he's, he's had thrown his way. Well, he's also had to really step up. Obviously, Alex Endel, one of their key offensive playmakers, gone. So a couple mm. of the other guys had to come in and help fill the production void. 
You, there's no way to sugarcoat it that uh, the loss of Alex Endel really, really did hurt them. And a great player, a, a real leader of the team, um, can score from any position, really, with his explosiveness. Pump fake. Might have someone open here, and good defence 17 on 17. On the coverage there, of course, is Connor Aldridge. Timing was perfect from Connor Aldridge there. Good closing speed on the ball. It really did, did look like Jacques Flauzard, uh was going to catch that, was going to come down with it, and last minute comes flying in Aldridge. Bang. Frustration from Flazar because he really thought he had it. Where did he come from? <laughs> Second and ten. Surely it was Pierre. Gorovich <laughs> at running back. Nice pass on to meet to Flazar. Flazar will wrestle with the wolf back now. And well, look where we are. With two minutes remaining, that should be the two minute warning. Western Australia again, like they were with Queensland, find themselves in a position to finish the game. Where do you score on the board? It looks like. Um if I'm seeing that right, that the uh, defence is backing off, not allowing any any deep play. So the, uh, the corners and the safeties are backing off, which allows underneath catches. And then, you know, then you've got the yards after catch. Anything can happen after that. A missed tackle, a downfield block, all of a sudden they're in the end zone. And uh, New South Wales certainly does not want that. They've had the ball for a very long time now, has the Raiders. And Westlake's running... Trying to avoid the pressure. Oh. Will they count that as a fumble? They'll call it a pass. New South Wales jumping it just in case. Right, right. The age there of Mr. Westlake, only 17. He'll be back next tournament. Assuming he wants to be. Assuming, obviously, the, the trials process proves to be successful for him again. For the young Raiders team, you really would love to see them score if you're a Raiders fan. And if you're in neutral, just to, 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 to get a goose egg off the, off, off the board. As a Wolverines, you really, really want to keep them out of the end zone. This is, this is important. And it'll be a draw play, but Banabar or Banaba's not fooled, nor the rest of his defensive line cohort. And they shut that one up. On a draw play like that or a delay, you'd like to see the, the middle really open up. And that certainly did not happen. The middle just collapsed. It's like a large fellow on the ground. 114, the official time remaining in the game. We're looking at third down but another player down we're at this point now where fatigue's really starting to set in yeah two games in three days sometimes these bodies if you haven't competed in a scenario like this and you uh you do find yourself hitting a wall and let's remind the uh any of the audience there with western australia they always sort of start with their own little disadvantage we talk about the all-stars coming in without any sort of um chemistry they've come from three different states Anytime Perth has to play, or anytime the Western Australia has to play on the uh, the East Coast, they kind of go almost two days without sleep because they've got to take close to a red eye to get to the East Coast. And obviously, they get in around 6 a.m. You're not going to make them sleep and turn around their body clock. So you've got to keep them awake. You keep them awake for that day, and then you've got to keep them up, get them up early for game day. So with all that travel and all that time, it really takes them a couple games to get into gear. It really is hard for your head to get around. Um, yes, they're young. Yes, they're full of beans. And uh, 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 for a lot of these players, they, it's, it's hard to catch up to the lack of sleep, the lack of rest. The, 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 the body clock is, is thrown out of kilter. Um, and they'll find their rhythm for, for half a game, three quarters of a game. But whether it's a slow start or a slow finish, at some point it does catch up. And unless you're going at 100 miles an hour constantly, uh, you, you're leaving yourself open for injury. It's Hans Priapen making his way to the sideline. 
Hopefully all good there. West Lake was still looking for his touchdown. Trying to hit Curtis. Sorry, Charlie Reed, who's kind of jumped on the field there. I the saw that right. Harris Walker making a play. Diving in there, uh, knocking the ball away, because it certainly looked like it was on for a catch and possible touchdown. Like Charlie Reed getting some action at the right slot. Will he go for him? Rolls to the left, Ooh. trying to hit, throws off his back foot there, and New South Wales going to get pinned for roughing the passer. Drive continues. If I saw that, was that Zach Fernley blitzing in there from his linebacker position? Uh, hard for him to, to check his momentum to uh, pull up. 54. Yep. Dropped his shoulder and drive through the quarterback. That should be a better end for it. Zach, Zach Fernley. Yeah, I don't know. His head's down by that point. He's kind of committed to it. He is committed. Yeah, but at the same a, time, I can understand the flag. So you got to protect the quarterback. Um, but he was committed. His, his shoulders were down. He was his low pad level. It's hard, it's really hard to pull up with your legs churning. Lucky pass there. Second down now. Second and five, or shall I say second and goal from the five. Defense have been in this position before after that uh, first half long catch uh, from Lucky Pink. They were on the one foot line or whatever it was, and then a, an offsides or a false start motion. Oh, excuse me, penalty. Followed by a turnover, and there's a great de defensive stand. So let's see if they've got another defensive stand in them. Quick fade, and this one will be intercepted. New South Wales, we will they will earn their shutout. And registering his second intercept of the game in the red zone is Mitchell King. Yep, nice adjustment on the ball. We just were talking about a, a turnover deep, deep in their own uh, end. And disappointing for the offense of the of the Raiders, but a great defense. Uh, and great flow to the ball. Did most things right. A couple of silly penalties, but did most things right on that uh, defensive drive. Did, it, drive. did the Wolverines defense. New South Wales here. Well, WA's only got the two timeouts. There's not enough to stop here. I mean, it's the... It's in their prerogative to handle it how they will, but we are getting told that New South Wales have advised they will be taking back-to-back -back knees. And should be walking out of here with a 34 point victory. <laughs> Just uh, discussing whether that one point short of 35 points is going to cost them. And there's one knee from Hepton Stall. Once again, rotating quarterback. So Hepton Stall gets to take the snaps here. And one more of those should send us on our way and send these two teams to the dinner hall. Kevin Chen waiting for the call. My stomach rumbles. And while we can, that's one final recap of today's results. Queensland 49 points over South Australia. Keep in mind on the ladder that will only be reflected as 35. 38 points to 14, Victoria over Tasmania, and right now the New South Wales Wolverines are one play away from sealing a 34 points to zero victory over Western Australia. Captain Stall, under centre, takes it, takes a knee, and New South Wales joins the Winners' Club here at Narrabeen at the Sydney Academy of Sports and Recreation. Ball is raised, that's full time, and that is the end of three games here on day two in the Junior AGL here in 2019 in New South Wales. Coach, outgoing thoughts? Uh, a great win for New South Wales. It keeps them in the hunt. Obviously, there's work to do and the cards need to fall their way going forward. 
Uh, looking, really looking forward to the way things do fall on, on Thursday with some really key games, in particularly and obviously the Victoria versus Queensland game where, once again, whoever shows up is going to take away the win. Uh, good, it's going to be a good matchup. I'll leave you with a few visions of day three on the final graphic we'll talk about here in New South Wales taking on the All-Stars, South Australia Sharks taking on WA and Queensland versus Victoria, which now is shaped up to be a very key game of this tournament. We'll leave you with pictures of New South Wales out going there and enjoying their victory. But on behalf of live streaming Brisbane, Paul Mills and our crew here, and of course my partner in crime for this afternoon, Milos Vassell, a.k.a. Coach Wolf. I'm Kenny Andres. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to your company on Thursday.